The Monty Show, the truth in sports talk streaming. When you want unbiased opinions about your favorite team without the spin, all you have to do is find The Monty Show, streaming live and available 24 hours a day, seven days a week on YouTube. And now, here's Monty. Hey, hey, The Monty Show. Happy Thursday to you already. Thursday Night Football, a full preview coming up on The Monty Show as always. Presented by the Advocates, the best injury attorneys in the business. And again, you guys, I ask you if you have it in your heart, if you have a dollar, five dollars, twenty dollars, the Advocates are working with the Road Home, one of the foremost uh, homeless advocates in the country, uh, to provide uh, Halloween costumes for homeless kids. And imagine, yes, old Uncle Monty gonna pull on the heartstrings. Imagine a 10-year-old who doesn't have a Halloween costume. They're homeless. They don't know where they're going to sleep at night, yet we can give them some normalcy. Whether you donate a dollar, five dollars, a million dollars, it goes directly to homeless kids to give them costumes for Halloween. That is the Venmo for the advocates on the screen. And I know so many of you have been generous and have been giving. Please, let's continue to do that. Um, We have got just a couple of weeks left to get that done. And the road home, the advocates, this thing that they're doing, I tell you every day how great the advocates are as attorneys. So many of our viewers have used the advocates uh, for car accidents. I know so many people uh, that get hurt at work and have workman's comp issues. They care about our communities, man. And it just breaks my heart to think about, um, you know, kids that are homeless, it's not their fault. They didn't be asked to be put in that situation. And I think if, if we have what we have, we're all so lucky to be here today. Let's find $5 and Venmo it. Let's find 20, let's find 100. And Venmo the advocates today or get online, theadvocates.com, chat them up. Um, and in the notes section, if you can just put, hey, the Monty Show Halloween costumes, that'd be great. Appreciate all of you. Appreciate the advocates at theadvocates.com. Uh, a lot to get to today. I want to start with, Texas and Oklahoma today, because obviously this is a game of the week. And I think this is one of the most important games of the year. It's got everything you want. National championship implications, Big 12 championship implications. But I think implications going forward between the Big 12 and the SEC. And so many people have made a story out of whether or not Brett Yormark's going to be at this game and Greg Sankey, the commissioner of the SEC, is going to be there for a part-time. It's amazing to me how much vitriol, anger, uh, jealousy, frustration is surrounding the Red River Showdown. I was corrected yesterday. I thought it was interesting. I've been saying Red River Rivalry. And I was told it's the Red River Showdown. Okay. Whatever it is, it is Texas and OU at the Cotton Bowl. It's a big flipping deal. And I guess my question is, how important is this game to the overall state of football in Texas? And without the University of Texas, who's going to the SEC with OU next year, can the Big 12 hang on to the state of Texas? And I'm here to tell you, I believe they can. I think Texas is Big 12 country. And we look at... Why Dave Aranda is under so much fire at Baylor? Because Baylor's critical. You know, you have TCU. Obviously, you have Texas Tech. You have Houston. You you have Baylor. You need that group to be really strong. And right now, none of them are strong. And Texas is the behemoth. The Longhorns are dominating college football right now. Jake, can the Big 12 hang on to Texas without Texas. Yeah, you know, I think that's that's really tough because Texas is obviously the biggest brand in the state. And I think that, you know, sure, the Big 12 has numbers, right? Strength in numbers. You have more schools there than obviously the SEC has or will have. But I, but I think what's tough is that when Texas is winning as a brand, they dominate. And everybody wants to be a Texas fan. It's cool to be a Texas fan. Texas is that big name in football whether we're talking the nfl or college football the state of texas is a football state and i think that you know if if texas continues to win and continues to dominate continues to be uh front and center in not only the the college football playoff conversation but also you know a heisman trophy conversation let's say for years to come they're going to continue to dominate that state and 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 look i love 
I love the fight that Baylor has displayed. I, I, I think that Dana Holgerson and Houston are going to do some things, but we need to see them do those things before we can say that they can compete on a brand level with Texas. So I think, you know, moving forward, if Texas continues to win and we don't see mediocrity out of that program, I would say that the SEC probably, from a national perspective, owns the state of Texas moving forward. Yeah, I think it's going to be really close. I am, obviously, we have talked at length about Jimbo Fisher's struggles in College Station. I just don't think Texas A&M moves the needle at all in college football. I don't even think Texas A&M is relevant in the SEC at this point. It's hard for me to believe that Texas A&M is a destination place for recruits in the state of Texas. I much more put value into the University of Texas. The Longhorns brand, I think we all know, is unquestioned. Uh, Whether you want it to be or not, that certainly is a – is a is a real conversation the hate that is out there for the burn orange but i i think when i look at texas uh as a state i think it's so much more than the university of texas i think the combination of texas and oklahoma obviously you're not going to replace that right there's no way to compensate for losing two powerhouses like that but when you look at what's coming into the conference the four you added this year adding utah the arizona schools coach prime in colorado I think you are in a much more stable, stronger position as I think the Big 12 probably has ever been. That doesn't change the fact that this game Saturday, OU in Texas, I think is massive. I I don't know that it is the most important game in the history of Texas football. In fact, we all know it's not. But when you look at regular season Red River rivalries and you look at how difficult it is for me to say Red River rivalry. Uh, This is one of the biggest and most important ones of all time. I think there's a lot of pride on the line, and I think the funny thing here is, and much to Brent Venable's credit, I think he really enjoys the fact that nobody's talking about OU football. Mm -hmm. Nobody's talking about Oklahoma. Everybody's focused on Texas. Everybody is focused on them being national champions. Texas winning the the conference on the way out the door. How long it's been since Texas has done that. It's kind of surprising to me that Oklahoma is flying under the radar. And I think if you are Texas, you need to be very careful this weekend because I don't see this as a blowout. I think what they've accomplished at at Oklahoma, even with the Art Bryles controversy and all the noise that came up around that, Oklahoma's in a really good spot. Now, the problem, obviously, with Oklahoma this year is they've not been tested. Right. In any way, shape, or form, they've not been tested. I think I can make the argument that Texas could be the most tested team in the country at this point. They're going to be ready. Mm -hmm. And I think being at the Cotton Bowl gives them a slight advantage. I love Texas in this game. I think Texas should be the number one team in the country if Georgia falters in any way, shape, or form. And we're going to do Heisman Watch coming up in about an hour. I'll even go this far to say if if Texas wins this game, how does Quinn Ewers not become the leading, the favorite to win the Heisman Trophy? Yeah, absolutely. And I, and, I, and I think this is the kind of game for, for a Heisman conversation that, that, you know, it has signature win written all over it, right? I mean, it has, hey, not only did you beat Alabama, you went ahead and beat Oklahoma – uh, on your way to an undefeated season like this is one of those games for Quinn Ewers uh, from a selfish standpoint where I'm like yeah hey Quinn like this is one you have circled for a variety of different reasons I mean again like I, I agree from a team perspective dude you win this game handily uh, you know and I'm not saying they're gonna blow Oklahoma out but let's say they do dude there's no reason why you shouldn't be number two in the country because again I maintain that Georgia should be number one just like you said until they falter but Texas is right there. I have no yeah. doubt that Texas could beat Georgia. I have no doubt about that. Uh, I, I I think that that when it comes to you know owning the state of Texas and who's got the biggest brand and like who's putting the most guys in the league and who like who's doing all these things. That's why I say like when Texas is in the SEC, if they continue to win and they continue and Quinn Ewers continues to be in the Heisman conversation, let's say if he's there, like. I, I think that it, it, it just allows you to be out front and it allows you to lead the conversation. And the last time I checked, Baylor's not competing with Texas right now. You know, you had the other brands, the TCUs, you, you're not Texas Tech, Houston. Those programs aren't competing with Texas right now. And that's not to put them down, but I'm just simply saying, you know, A&M next to Texas is not 
anything. Well, and the other thing I'd remind everybody of, and I'm sure you all know this, but a and M's playing Alabama at Kyle Field. You remember, where's Greg Sankey going? Well, yeah, yeah he's going to the Cotton Bowl, but where is he going after that? Well, he's going to Kyle Field and College Station. Yeah. Like he, this is a massive weekend of football in the state of Texas. And can you imagine Texas as a state if the Longhorns win – and then A and M wins. Oh my God! Yeah. Can you imagine Oklahoma and Alabama losing in the state of Texas in the same weekend? My God! Yeah. I I think it may just evaporate before our eyes. I think it may evaporate before our but, eyes. And, and, I, dude, I, it's I, amazing. Yeah, I think if you're Brett Yormark too, like you know, we've talked on this show so much about expansion and realignment and five year windows and you know, looking at it from the thousand yes. foot view. And I think if you're Brett Yormark, like. These type of weekends aren't lost on you from that perspective either. Like, again, you, you got to, I mean, obviously you have incoming schools next year in the Big 12, but none of those schools are Texas. And Texas has a, a, a special thing about it. So with all due respect to Utah and the Arizona schools and Colorado, like Colorado brand-wise with Prime, Maybe if they're in a national championship conversation, but that's only a maybe. Oh, man. I don't think there's anybody even close. I mean, we've talked about this. is What's so disappointing about, about Tech? You know, you have this situation with Tyler Shuck. Now, he's hurt, broke. Da, da, da. Like, all the failures, all the losses. Look where Texas Tech is this weekend. Baylor. I mean, two of the most disappointing teams, not in the conference, in the country. Yeah. And I'm not really that surprised that Baylor is struggling this year. I think, you know, our preview, we had him at five wins. But you look at Texas Tech, it is shocking how bad Texas Tech has been this year. It is shocking how, and I, the numbers may disagree with me, I felt like when he was healthy, Tyler Shuck was a mediocre quarterback. Mm -hmm. Like, it is shocking how bad Texas Tech is. And you can you can make a lot of people forget that by beating the hell out of Baylor this weekend. Yeah. Because Texas Texas Tech should be, and we describe them as the dark horse to win the conference this year. That's all dead now. So what are you Thanks. playing for? You're playing to beat down Baylor. You're playing to whack Dave Aranda. You are playing not to be irrelevant because the worst thing that can happen. If Alabama beats Texas A&M and Oklahoma beats Texas, which are very likely to happen, I mean, would it, would it be surprising at all if Alabama beat A&M and Oklahoma beat Texas? I don't think that would be shocking in any way, shape, or form. I would be more surprised with Oklahoma beating Texas than A&M and Alabama. I think that that Texas is on a mission. Like I like, yeah. and, and, and I think that. You know, I, I only say that because, and obviously Jimbo and, and the old Sabinator have a lot of heat between them. You know, they've obviously sure, ja jabbed at each other over the past two years over NIL and everything. But but I, I, I just think that Steve Sarkeesian, again, not my favorite coach. Texas isn't my favorite school. Like, I'm not, I'm not a fan. But the reality of the situation is Sark has still a lot to prove. I understand you beat Alabama. Oh. I understand you're undefeated, but you haven't proved anything yet. When does right? he get over, though? When he wins, when he, when I, saying he gets over if he wins a national championship only is a little rough. I think if you get to the national championship game, you've gotten over. If you win it, certainly you put everything to bed. Yeah, but, but does it matter if, you, if, if you're Steve Sarkeesian and you're taking your Longhorns to the SEC? Does it matter if you win the Big 12? Well, it does it matter? Sure, it matters. But it's it's not what it meant to Kansas State. No. It's, I, I don't think it is good enough for Steve Sarkeesian in Texas to simply beat Oklahoma and coast in the, the, the Big 12 championship. No. I think if you are the only thing good enough at Texas, and I think this speaks to what – the brand at Texas is, I guess, and, and I know we have a lot of Lubbock. I know we have a lot of Dallas. I know we have a lot of anti-Texas fans in, 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 our, in our chat. I just think that the only expectation at Texas is winning a national championship right now, mm -hmm. as it should be. I, I, I have said for a month on this show, they're the best team in the country, bar none. They're the best team in the country. I think they're better than Georgia. Mm-hmm. Now, should they be ranked number one? Uh, we could have that conversation all day. Should they be ranked behind Michigan? No, they should not. No. No, they should not. 
And I, I just look at what the expectations in Austin are, and they should be national championship or bust. They should be because you're going into a buzzsaw next year. And Texas's schedule is not easy. I mean, the, the Big Ten put out their schedule for next year, and who's, who's, who's on Texas's schedule next year? Flipping Michigan. Mm-hmm. So we're going to get our question answered. Maybe – and because and, I just don't believe Michigan makes a national championship, and I, I'd be kind of surprised if Texas did not. Maybe we have to wait till next year. I hope we don't because I think Texas – I hope that Texas has to go through every major blue blood in college football to win the national championship, if in fact they do. Well, and I think the, the cool thing, at least from what we've seen so far, is that they have that attitude about them, you know, and, and, and it's one thing. I, honestly, I think it's what's haunted Steve Sarkeesian through his coaching career is that a lot of his, his either, you know, his, his teams or, you know, the, his coaching groups, like they don't have that edge. They don't have that hey, I'm, I'm trying to go out and prove a point every week when we play our games. And and I think that you're right. Like, if they were to, if they were to you know, get that shot at Michigan this year, not next year, this year, you know, if they were to get to that national championship game and, like, that's that's what he's after. And, yeah. and, and, and I'm telling you guys, dudes like Quinn Ewers and, you know, Jade Barron and Ford and Xavier Worthy, like, those dudes – obviously are going to go to the league. But before they knock that off their list, they want to win a national championship, and they know they're good enough to win a national championship. And they're not scared of anyone. That's the other reason I think the Alabama game was so important. The Alabama game not only showed folks like us or the fan base or whoever, all, everyone outside the program, how good they were, but you can't tell me inside the locker room you just beat Alabama. You tell me you don't believe you can run through anyone on any field? Yeah. Like they believe that now. And that's what I think is is awesome about this game against Oklahoma. Texas, I'm telling you, is going in there to try to win this thing by like two, three possessions. Now as they I, should. I don't know that that happens, but that's the mission if you're Texas. Yeah, I I think it's really interesting. All right, hit the like button. If you have not subscribed, please consider doing that. Uh, we really appreciate all of you guys being here. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for interacting with the show. It really helps us grow. Um, So again, please hit the like button while we tell you about uh, our good friends at Bucked Up Energy. Every day at this time, you know, we tell you that uh, Buckshot is the single greatest product at, well, I mean, Bucked Up makes a lot. I think this is their best product because it helps everybody. It's good. It is a good product with elite ingredients. And I know there's a lot of five-hour energy shots out there. I know there's a lot of people like, oh, caffeine's caffeine. Trust me when I tell you it's not. Not all caffeine is created equally. And when you combine it with the the brain food that is in Bucked Up, it's a real difference maker for you. Again, whether you sit at a desk all day, maybe you tutor kids online, maybe you drive a truck, maybe you pour cement. Buckshot will get you through your day. That last phone call, that TPS report, having to deal with millennials for five hours straight, Buckshot will get you through that day. All you do Put it in the fridge because they're amazing cold. Shake it up and then drop it. There it is. 200 milligrams of naturally sourced caffeine, brain food, no spikes, no drops, just the best in the business. And right now in the description below, you guys, don't take our word for it. We want to give you six free buck shots. There's a link below. Hit it. They'll send it right to your door. You don't have to pay for them, and then you're going to get to try it. You're going to get to experience what I talk about every day with Buckshot. That's how much Bucked Up believes in their product. It's in the link below. Hit it. So many have in the last five days. We have had over 300 viewers get a six-pack of Buckshot for free. Why haven't you taken advantage of it right now in the description below? Hook it up. Buckshot, Bucked Up, the official energy provider of the Monty Show. And hey, if you need some whey protein isolate, if you need some greens, some endurance, their pre-workout is award-winning and by far the best on the market. Use the promo code MONTY20 to get 20% off at checkout. All right, let's go. First one in today, uh, Patrick Bourne. Welcome back to the program, Patrick. Good to see you. Patrick says, I'm not anti-Texas. Well, as a Baylor fan, I think you probably should be if you're not. But, hey, you know, who am I to say? Uh, Kevin the Destroyer, first one in. Wow, look at that. Horns down crimson. Look at that helmet. 
by Kevin to Destroyer. Nice job. LB Seminole says first loser. Yes, second place is the first loser. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Derek Roche says, dang, I'm off early today. I can probably listen to most of the show. Let's go, baby. Hey, did you guys see uh, the article that came out on Cam Rising? Speaking of Derek Roche, did you guys see the article that came out? Everybody had believed Josh Newman, KSL Sports, and Salt Lake City wrote it. Everybody had believed that Cam Rising tore his ACL. Well, he did, but he tore every other ligament and, and cartilage in his <coughs> knee as well. He did not just tear his ACL. Cam Rising blew his knee out. So the ACL, the MCL, the patella, he had a major cartilage injury. That's a big deal. Now maybe you understand why he has not been back. If you have not seen the the interview with Josh Newman and, and Cam Rising, go get it. It's on my Twitter feed, The Monty Show, M-O-N-T-Y, The Monty Show. Derek, good to see you. The 14 playoff rewards easy schedules. The SEC are totally overrated and have been for a while. Well, I don't know that I would say that George is overrated. I think that, you know, the the Nick Saban teams that were national championship contenders were not overrated this year's Alabama team is not nearly as good as past Alabama teams but to me like again and this is where opinion in college football comes in this this win that Georgia had last week at Auburn uh, I thought was a great win that said Georgia has expectations so playing a close game with Auburn at their place probably isn't a good look for the college football playoff so that's why I say I think Georgia's legit I think that was a good road win uh, but teams yeah. like Michigan are not legit, in my opinion. Ohio State a, is not legit, but seemingly, you know, is in that picture every a win single o- a year. A win over Notre Dame isn't legit for Ohio State? Uh, not when it's asterisk, the way it was asterisk. You know, I, I mean, yeah, sure, you, you beat Notre wow. Dame. Wow. But, but, you know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean the way it was asterisk? It was asterisk. They had 10 guys on the goal line. And Who you cares? Right that's, where they that, were. Hey, that's not Ohio State's fault. Yeah, that's but not it, Ohio. But that's not a win at Notre Dame Stadium. At fault. We're talking about the legitimacy of their oh, win. I totally if we're, if we're going to sit here and knock Georgia for beating Auburn on the road, then Ohio State can get knocked for the Notre Dame win. Look, man, I love I love Notre Dame. I think everybody knows that I'm a huge Notre Dame fan, and I am telling you that I am a I am somebody that believes Ohio State was the better team that day. Ryan Day was the better coach that day. And I think what Ryan Day said after the game about Lou Holtz and all of that nonsense, they were ready for Notre Dame. Notre Dame put up a hell of a fight. But I'm not taking anything away from Ohio State on that win. I think what Ohio State accomplished there was I thought they were really good. Now, is Alabama overrated? No, I don't think so. I think Alabama is Alabama's coming into their own. I just think it's going to take it's going to take some time, but you know, I, 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 man, I'm really surprised to hear you say that. Aaron Wilson says Notre Dame was in that game. They were in that game. But to what Jake's talking about, if you guys didn't see it, and somehow you, you missed it, I don't know how. Um, Notre Dame on the last two plays of the game had 10 men on the field. And what was it, five inches? Something Ohio like State scored a touchdown by five inches. And the missing 11th man was their, was their right defensive tackle. That's not Ohio State's fault right? But, in but any I'm way, not, shape, or form. But I'm not talking about whether it's their fault or not. I'm talking about the legitimacy of a win. Dude, if the right tackle is there, you probably don't score. That's the reality of it. But you did. You got the win. Yeah, but when we're talking, when we're talking about rankings and stuff, yeah, I'm absolutely going to, gonna, you know, I'm going to say, okay, yeah, you, you won, you beat Notre Dame. But it's not like, you know, in past years where Ohio State's come out and dropped 50 on a great opponent and just blown them out. I mean, right, that was a different game. Again, I'd remind you, Notre Dame's pretty good. Yeah, they are. But part of being an elite team is having elite coaching. Notre Dame does not have that. Ohio State does. And I think we saw it again in Notre Dame Duke when Notre Dame was running around in the red zone late in the game. And it cost them a touchdown again because they didn't have the right play call and the right assignment in. Yeah. Right? So, I, I don't know. I, I Would we take something away from Duke if, you know, if Notre Dame was not properly positioned? I, I don't. No, because Duke is in Ohio State. Yeah, I, I just, yeah. Aaron Wilson also says the beam is back. Yes, it is. And we've tried, like, it, 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 don't get me started. Christopher Shannon, damn, Jake, you really holding that in Ohio State? He is. 
Yeah. He is. I yeah, just because I'm I'm tired of the double standard. I'm tired of people saying Georgia's not legitimate and the SEC gets a free pass, and then we want to sit here and say that Ohio State got a got a a a, a great win over Notre Dame. A great win over Notre Dame would have been like a, a, a 10 point win, just a controlling the game. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about. There's no question Ohio State. This year's Ohio State team is not as good as prior year's Ohio State team. I mean, we're going to find out. We're going to find out how good they are because I think the the best is yet to come. I mean, Ohio State – and we're, I think we're finally going to stop hearing from Maryland fan in the comments section like we did Monday and Tuesday yeah, yeah. Uh, because Maryland's got Ohio State at the shoe this weekend. Yeah, see, like that's a game where I'm like, okay – Ohio State, uh, you know, odds on college football playoff team. I'd expect a 30-point win right there. They're it's favored the by shoe. 20. You're at the shoe. You should control that game. Like, no no reason why that shouldn't be just a dominating win. And, and I'm not trying to be uh, uh, harsh on Ohio State. I just think that, that uh, again, I'm just trying to be fair. I see all kinds of people, both in our comments section, on Twitter, everywhere. Yeah. Why don't you say, oh, well, dude, Georgia struggled with Auburn. On the road, okay. So if we're gonna if we're gonna discount that, then let's use the same measuring stick. I just stick. I just think when you look at when you and, and I would agree that Ohio State has played a soft schedule. I mean, they're Notre Dame, and then it's what five weeks until they play Penn State, and then after that, it's four more weeks until they play uh, Michigan to end the season. Like those yeah. are your three games. Yeah. They handle their business at Notre Dame Stadium. There's just no way to spin that. Let me let me ask you this, and, and, I, and I'm really just asking this in a, in, in fairness. Mm -hmm. They put up 17 points against Notre Dame. So is so is that like we feel that Ohio State is a, a really good team doing that because Notre Dame's. You know, I think I think Ohio State has quarterback issues. I think we absolutely saw um, that. You know they. Look, Kyle McCord is a is a guy that's untested. He's somebody that I think in that last drive, uh, where Ohio State went down and and won the game, he proved himself. Mm -hmm. And they've been on by, so we haven't seen him since. Right. But I'd also remind you, Notre Dame, um, who is who has scored a ton of points on everybody but Ohio State. Ohio State. Yeah, absolutely. They absolutely. put up twenty one on Duke, forty one on on Central, forty five on NC State, like. Again, and I don't think Notre Dame's played the world, but Ohio State and Duke back to back is pretty good. But in Ohio State's favor, because because you know everyone's going to say I'm just hating on Ohio State. Yeah, which you are. Held, I'm not hating on Ohio State <laughs> at all. Uh, know. Uh, 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 you know they they held Notre Dame to 14 points. Okay, I agree. Ohio State's defense is legit, no question about it. But yeah. but I, I I it's just difficult because you play in the Big Ten. I'm glad that this problem gets resolved next year when you know you have much more quality opponents, you know, and, and I think that, the, you know, the other hard part is that, is that I look at games like, you know, Texas and Oklahoma, and I see all the heat in that game. What, what game is Ohio State going to play? What, Penn State? Penn, Penn State, Ohio State's Penn had State. some heat. Yeah. Right? Like, they've had some heat. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's the whole kit and caboodle, dude. Like, yeah. there's not a, I mean, even, even, even next year, I mean, Ohio. It's not like Ohio State. Ohio State has some difficult schedule. They don't. I mean, I, I, I more look at. Yeah, I, listen. It's all going to be played out in front of us. Ohio State or Michigan are going to lose, and it, it really is that simple. Whoever loses that game is probably out of the college football playoff. Uh, John Ham for five dollars. Wow, Jake's hate on the. Ohio State sounded like the haters on Deion Sanders at Colorado made no sense. I, I understand. I don't think it m makes no sense. You're saying that, hey, if there had been 10 men at the goal line, Notre Dame probably wins that game. Well, or 11 men in the game at the goal line instead of 10. The problem is there wasn't, and we'll never know that. Yeah, man, that's and true. And so the, hyper fact. the hyperbole that, and a lot of people have said that, that, hey, if they have 11 men in that formation, Notre Dame wins. But, but think of it this way. You just don't know that. Think of it this way. And this is kind of the point I'm trying to make. Whether you think it makes sense or not, that's your opinion. But but the point I'm trying to make is when the college football playoff committee is sitting around a table looking at Ohio State's schedule, mm -hmm. you damn well know they're going to look at that Notre Dame game and say, okay, 
Like, let's say they, let's say Ohio State just smothers Michigan, just beats the living hell out of Michigan in a dominant win end the season. Uh huh. Okay, the Notre Dame goal line thing probably isn't going to come up as much, right? Because you just made a statement against Michigan. There's no way we're denying you. I don't think anybody will talk about that goal line situation in, in December mm. because their season will be so much more clearly defined at that point. Yeah, I think if you're a two-loss team, sure. Okay, well, you know, they beat Notre Dame. Notre Dame only had 10 men in the game. Okay, then we can have much more of a conversation yeah. about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. But I, I I, kind of agree with John and some others. You're, you're kind of being a hater now. Okay, well, let Ohio State prove me wrong then. Yeah. Um, Tanner, thank you, Monty. That was that what-if game is stupid. Oh, it's incredibly stupid. But that's it, what we do in college football. Is that not what we do? Oh, I think it's what we do in all sports. I, I, I'm not criticizing you for that. I, it's a strong take. You backed it up. I don't have a problem with it. I just disagree with you. That doesn't mean you're wrong. But I think we love the, the – man, can you guys imagine if Bill Buckner had caught that ball off of Mookie Wilson's bat? We love to do that stuff. Well, he didn't catch that ball, and they didn't have 11. So The reason I'm playing the what-if game with Ohio State is because you won the game by five inches. And all the pro-Ohio State people are going to say, well, five inches or five miles, doesn't matter. We won the game. Okay, that might be true. Well, but but when you get into the college football playoff and you lose a game that maybe you shouldn't have lost, if that happens, again, prove me wrong, go win a national championship, and I'll shut up about Notre Dame. But yep. that's where I'm. that's how I look at college football. You're having to beat Notre Dame this year by five inches. You're having to struggle to go to Notre Dame and put up 17 points. Dude, last year, that's the year very, before, that's very true. dude, you would have you would have run Notre Dame's ass out of that right, stadium but with may, 30. But 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 maybe Notre Dame's actually good. Okay, there I said it. There but, I okay. said it. I actually feel that it that's a lie. Notre Dame's not good. They're, they're, okay. Yeah. Uh Mike Smith, we also do a little thing called scoreboard. Hell yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, do. You do. Yeah, and we they do. won the game, and that's why I keep saying you won the game. You're undefeated. You, you. There's no reason why you would be denied, and and that's fine. I'm good with that. <laughs> Levi Long, <laughs> watch out, Jake. You might get yelled at by Ryan Day. You know what? I hope Ryan Day chews my ass, dude. I hope he talks all about us. It, 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 right, Bobby Ryan. LOL. Notre Dame is not good. We don't have a coach. How can you win games without a coach, man? Notre Dame, our mother. You know, uh, Dakota Tubbs. Oh, man. OG Gary's back. Is he really? Where's OG Gary? There he is. OG Gary, Ohio State is going 10 and 2. Well, I don't know. I actually would expect him to do more than that, man. I would too. They I, beat I, Notre like, Dame, who's I, really good. I, I would expect them. The only, the, dude. The schedule says the only game you should be in any kind of danger of losing is Michigan. And yeah. Penn State, I know there's typically heat, but you should beat that team, man. They are not good this year. Yeah, J.K. Marshall's being a jerk by saying, what if the Cubs? What if the Cubs were owned by somebody else? I know. Call it, um, it, it, It's crazy. Expedition, Greg, if you don't think Notre Dame is good, look what happens when they play USC next Saturday. Well, let's find out because – Again, I think USC is a really interesting question. Going off the Colorado game, I think Notre Dame's got a great chance to beat USC. Is, like, is USC legitimate? Is USC a national championship contender? I don't think we can say that right now, It's tough for me now, to dude. say that right now. 40 points, giving up 40 against Colorado. And I know, and this is what you said last week, and I totally agree with it. Hey, 9 a.m. kickoff, you know, SC really didn't get going until the second half. Okay, okay, cool. Same, same deal with Ohio State, right? We're not changing the logic. Okay, hey, you won the game. I'm not going to play the what-if game. You won the game. If you're any type of national championship contender, any type of college football playoff team, you should you should be yeah. you should be able to put up at least 24 points on the Notre Dame defense because I agree their defense is, is solid. Yeah, I, I'll be interested to see how that goes. That game's at Notre Dame. Obviously, USC's got to get by Arizona first. And Jed Fish, I'm a huge Jed Fish fan. They're not capable of beating USC. No. So this will be a tune-up, and maybe, hey, Arizona could be that trap game. But all of this to say, I think when you look at the real powerhouses in college football, Texas has passed every test. And I still maintain Texas is the best team in the country. You notice how we don't have to play the what-if game with Texas. There's no asterisk next to the Alabama win. There's no questions or... Texas is a, in my opinion, Texas is right there with Georgia. Those are the two best teams in the country, and and I, I just don't think that's really 
uh, like in dispute. I don't even think that's a hot take. Those how, two are clearly better. But how big is I? I think they're clearly better. Yeah. But I I still maintain the Texas Tech Baylor game is massive. Like that's a big game in the Big Twelve. Mm-hmm. That is. That is, and, and I don't care what Baylor says, they can continue to support Dave Aranda all they want. You're making a coaching change after the season. I don't see how you don't. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> I think for Texas Tech, this game is absolutely ginormous. Oh, and I think for, for Joey's tenure so far, I mm. mean, I, 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 you know, this is obviously a huge brand in the Big 12. You know, like, I, it's, it's, one, it's definitely one you want to win. Yeah, I can't get away from this sunbeam, by the way. Oh, paralyzing. Uh, let's see. Bryce Martin. Uh, SEC has most of Texas's big donors. Big 12 has schools with core recent success. It's a stalemate right now. That's why Texas Tech, and I know you guys are tired of hearing me say it because I see it in the comments section every night. I, uh, I, Texas Tech is critically important to the Big 12. Yeah. Critically important. You have to have, I just think you have to have Texas Tech be good. Texas Tech has to be relevant. Texas Tech has to win big games. What if Texas Tech had actually hung on and beat Oregon? What if Texas Tech had hung on and beat Wyo? Yeah. What if, right? It's just so important. It is so important that Texas Tech pull their heads out of their asses in Lubbock and they start winning games. Yeah. And I think it starts this weekend with Baylor. Dude, you you look at where we're at. We're not early anymore. It's week six. Jake said to me, oh, yeah, it's week six in college football. I'm like, shut your mouth. No, it's week six oh, in college football. About, but you look, at, you look at this game. Um, what is it? Saturday night in Waco. It's at Baylor for Tech. Yeah. Kansas State at BYU, TCU at Kansas, UCF at Texas. Where's the easy out on that schedule? There's not one. There's not one. Because you have got – you look at how good BYU's been in the conference. And I, I, I've I said it a thousand times now. I, I was wrong about Keaton Slovis. Uh, that After that last performance at BYU that he put up for BYU and you beat Cincinnati – in a massive game, and and next weekend now you go to Fort Worth to take on TCU, you're going to be in every game. You are. You're going to get torched by Texas, but I would fully expect BYU to beat Texas Tech and Provo. Yeah, I'd fully expect BYU to beat Iowa State, uh, to beat West Virginia. That's going to be tough. Neil Brown's got some dudes doing some things at, at West Virginia. But wouldn't you fully expect if the game was today for BYU to beat Okie State? Oh, excuse me. Dude, dude, chill, man. To beat Oklahoma State? I would. Yeah. I would. I think that's a seven-win team. Yeah. Because I think they're going to beat Texas Tech. I think they're going to beat Iowa. That's going to get them to Iowa State. That's going to give them to six. And I think they're going to beat Oklahoma State for seven. Yeah. They, I mean, they, they... I agree. Start cobbling the statue of Kalani because this has been nothing short of remarkable. Yeah, impressive to say the least. Uh, Aaron Wilson, Immaculate is going to come after Jake. Why? What did we do now? Well, I didn't even, dude, I didn't even say anything <laughs> about we, Buddy, dude. What did we like, do now? What, like, you know, whatever. Uh, Philip Stahl, instead of golfing tomorrow, you need to hang a sheet over that window before your nose gets sunburned, dude. We need gaff tape. We need gaff tape, which we will have tomorrow. Uh, any, but to Jake's point, the college football playoff committee has and does play the what if, and they do. And knowing people on that committee and talking to people around that committee, on when they choose the, the college football playoff, it's quite literally a bunch of folks sitting in a room at a table, ordering pizza, drinking tasty beverages. Well, you know, this quarterback, and you remember that fourth down play? And they quite literally sit around a conference room table for an entire day and argue with each other over college football. Yeah. And it's... I don't even hate it. And let's make no mistake about it. Ohio State's going to be in the college football playoff. Like, you'd have to really mess I don't know. Up. Kenneth Maynard makes a pretty good point. Thank you for being a member for two months, Kenneth. Thank you, my man. Appreciate you, dude. Calling it now, Penn State beats the State University of Ohio. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ron Nolan, if buts and what about don't win games? Well, if my aunt were my uncle, she no. 
This is a family show. I agree, Ron. Good to see you, Ron Nolan. Uh, the eye patch. What are the odds Ohio State wins the national championship this year? 100 to 1? Mm. I don't like them to win the slim. natty this year. I, I, I think that. Win, what about win the Big Ten first? Yeah, I think there's a good chance to win the Big Ten. Yeah. I, I think I don't trust Michigan at all. But, I, like, but again, I, I, I keep telling people, I don't think it's, it's Michigan you got to trust. Do you trust that Penn State's not the best team in that league? I don't know. I don't think you can say that. I think I I look at I look at Penn State, and I know I get it. I get it. They have played a nothing schedule. That defense is real, dude. Like that Penn State defense. Again, West Virginia, Delaware, Illinois, Iowa, Northwestern. Okay. I mean. Those are knitting circles. I get Iowa's it. rank, though, with all due respect, 24th, 31 nothing. I mean, pitching a shutout against really anybody is impressive. Dude, they're, they're, they're dominating people in Happy Valley. And my biggest question is, does it matter to anybody here that that game's at Ohio State? That game's at the shoe. Yeah, well. That's huge. Yeah, I mean, in terms of the college football playoff, Ohio State has to win that game. If you're going to lose at home... You know, that's I think not going to help your case. This is such a defensive league now in the Big Ten. That's going to change. But this is such a defensive league today. I mean, th- those three defenses, Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan, those are three of the best defenses in the country. Yeah. And I'd also remind you, in that 31 nothing destruction of Iowa, um, that it, it's not as though, and again, I'm not trying to be critical of people, but Drew Aller, it's not like he tore up Iowa. You know, it's not like he is some, you know, behemoth. I mean, the guy only has one 300-yard game, and that was the first one of the year against West Virginia. That's it. I mean, he barely has 200-yard games to speak of. Yeah. So they're winning with defense, and I, I, their defense, I think, could arguably be the, the – mm, uh, Dakota Tubbs, what if, Jagoff? Thank you. We got it in in the first hour today, right? We yeah, got the, way to be on brand, dude. I appreciate you. I appreciate that. Jam on my jelly roll. What's up? Let's go. Uh, Monty, is it time for the Bears to choke the season away? <laughs> Bro, the season's over already, my man. It hurts. I'm not going to lie. I... I, I, I See, jam on my jelly roll, it, you're not a nice person. <laughs> to walk in here, <laughs> to walk in here and bring up Justin Fields. Hey, guys. Especially when he is the feature person in my prize picks winning tonight. <laughs> 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 I'm not a smart man. Um, if you guys look at my prize picks tonight, and we should probably save this, but it's too late now. Uh, if you look at my prize picks tonight, um, you're getting a uh, you're getting a real look at uh, Justin Fields more than 193 yards, DJ Moore more than four catches, Monte 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 Mon- please God just a half a sack. Oh, not shit. that sack, but like where you take the court. I'll move on. Terry McLaurin uh, five more than five catches. Speaking of the Ohio State. Terry McLaurin. So jam on my jelly roll. Settle down, sir. Yeah. <laughs> it's been time. Can we just be honest that it's been time? Seriously. Like, who are we? Who are we even kidding? Who are we even kidding? Football 50 in four minutes. We'll talk a lot about that game. Uh, Tarrant County, boy. Tamales are bomb. Depends on where you eat them from. Dude, I love tamales. Aaron Wilson, pack is dead. What's that got to do with the price of time in pack 10. Jamaica? Arizona. Uh, I think the race this year is wide open for the national championship. I, I agree. But who are the real contenders? Georgia and Today. Texas. Today's October 5th. Yeah. Yep. Georgia and Texas because they're undefeated. Michigan because they're, you know, undefeated. Is Florida State a legitimate contender for the national championship? I think they've got proving to do. Because in 13 minutes, we're going to talk about the Heisman Trophy. And it's remarkable to me that Travis is still on this list. 
And not at like, oh, top 10, he'd be nine. Like third in a lot of people's Heisman ballot. Because there, there's a the media puts a Heisman ballot out every week. Yeah. He's third. Yeah, and the boys in Vegas have him anywhere between third and fifth. How? Yeah, and, and you're talking about, we'll save it. We'll save Wild. it. Wild. Yeah, we'll save it. But is Florida State a legitimate contender for the national championship? I guess so. I mean, they're in the conversation, but for me, when I look at football, no, they're not. That feels, they feel vulnerable to me. Yeah, it feels like you have to stretch a bit to make it make sense for them. I think, I think you can say Georgia, Texas, Ohio State, Michigan. I, I, and again, I would put Penn State. I think Washington, certainly, the way Penix is playing, isn't Penix in the Heisman Trophy discussion? Yes. Certainly. I don't think USC is a contender for the national championship. There I said it. I feel better. I know it's going to piss off our Angelinos, and I love you guys. In, in, <laughs> look, I do. But this defense is fraudulent. Like, it, it is, and it's not even fraudulent. They're actually living up to the Jake, I hate Lincoln Riley billing. <laughs> Every year. Like, Buddy it, is you're as not wrong. consistent as they come. You're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. But other than that, Notre Dame, no. Alabama, no. Oklahoma, well, beat Texas. Yeah. I mean, if you're inside the top 15 right now, you're legit. You're, mm. You have a legitimate chance. But are you telling me, like, Oregon State? No. But Oregon State's got all their business in front of them, and they beat Utah. Oregon State's a contender for the national championship. The path to the national championship out of the Pac-12, and I don't care if you're a Beaver or you don't care. You got to win the conference, and then you got to go out and win that bowl game. Until that happens, you know. But where, what, who, who runs the Pac-12 right now? Well, I would tell you I think the best team in the Pac-12 is Oregon. Yeah. They are certainly the most physical team. Certainly. I think Oregon dominates that conference right now. Yeah. Period, point blank. Uh, Tanner Plummer, I hope USC isn't a contender. Caleb is a POS. Okay. Come on, man. Be better. Come on. What do you mean a POS? Oregon is scary. Yeah, they are, Gary. There is, there is no question. Oregon is very good. Uh, Marcus says USC is better than Florida State. See, like okay, I, that's a conversation. But Florida State has so much hype right now. And uh, are we truly hanging all the Florida State hype on a win over a really shitty Clemson team? Well, no. You know why they have all the hype? Because, again, writers continue to push them. It's what I always say. You're not say. wrong. Brett McMurphy, Damn. every single Monday. Yes, tip jar. Every single Monday. Brett McMurphy, and really it's Sunday, Brett McMurphy rolls out and says, oh, yeah, hey, guys, here's my AP Top 25 vote. Florida State, number one. And I just, I, I don't understand why, because, again, I know you're watching the game, Brett, because it's an East Coast team. I know you're watching the game. And you're really going to sit here and tell me that you think they're better than Georgia. Come on now. Um, how about the biggest unknown of the year, Oregon? I, what do you mean unknown? I mean, I think Bo Nix is playing his best football ever, um, at least at the collegiate level. I don't think I've ever seen him play this well. I think that defense is very good. Hey, that Colorado performance against SC makes Oregon look really good. It does. It does. And and we'll see. I, I don't hmm. – we'll see. Uh, Edgar says Oregon's the best team. J.K. Marshall, Beavers will rule all. I, I Oregon State's got every opportunity, dude. They have every opportunity. And there's, they're, they're good enough. I think DJ Uyunglele is playing really good football, which, again, smacks smacks Clemson and Dabo right in the face, man. Like Again how did again. He, how did he get away? Because he looks like he's legit to my eyes, right? Uh, Tanner Plummer, Oregon State is a contender for the title. Well, time will tell. Like I said, all their business is in front of them. Yeah. All in if, – if Reeser Stadium last year against Oregon is any – Indicator. Now this year you got to go, you know, got to go to the other side of the coin and go up to Hudson. But yeah, you know, I think they're mm. Christopher Shannon. Damn, he steals your nail polish. Yeah, what? Like, what do you mean he's a pos? I mean, you don't have to like him, but come on now. Uh, J.K. Marshall. Remember when Oregon lost to Oregon State last year? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Oregon State's capable of winning. Winning games, but playing at Austin is different than playing at Reeser, dude. Yep. Tanner Plummer, do you guys not remember Caleb painting his nails F Utah? But he did that for every opponent. Yeah. I don't like it. We ta I think we did 20 minutes on it last year when I, it happened. I, I think he's clear-cut the best quarterback in college football. Quinn Ewers Ooh. aside. 
Ooh. He is more athletic than Quinn is. Uh, I think Quinn's deep ball is better than Caleb Williams, but I would be taking Caleb over Quinn Ewers just overall. Might want to check that dude in Seattle because he's a bad motherfucker. Yeah. I'm not saying that Penix is Caleb, but. Penix has got a big arm. There's no question about it. He's, dude, he is really, really good. I mean, he's not as good as football 50, 10 of the hour, every hour on the Monty program. But he's close. Presented by our good friends at Prize Picks. Prize Picks, the daily fantasy partner of the Monty Show. Uh, click the link in the description below. It'll get you 100% deposit matching. Use the promo code Monty. Uh, if you do not have that link, just use the promo code Monty. 100% deposit matching, you guys. I'm on the Chicago freaking Bears. The Bears. Uh, Bears and Commanders tonight. Them Commanders. Yeah. Assholes. They're uh, minus 6, 44 and a half. This is uh, 8.15 on Prime Video. Any chance the Bears win this game? Oh, yeah. I think they're in this game. I, I think Really? Game. Yeah. I, I think that, that, again, look at last week's game. Right in that game until Justin Fields made a bad mistake. So, again... The question, and honestly, this is a question of the game. Put the commanders aside. I don't think this has anything to do with them. The question is, does Justin Fields make the big-ass mistake in this game that just completely shifts the momentum? Because if he avoids the big mistake and does exactly what he did last week, they will be fine. Does Justin Fields play all four quarters in this game before a limb is broken in two? Well, Montez Sweat... Is coming for that air. I'm just, I'm telling you that you look at the defensive line of the Commanders, which is one of the stupidest names in all the NFL. Uh, you look at the, you look at the Washington Commanders, and that that defensive line is terrifying. Right. The Bears' offensive line, I think, is the worst offensive line, just short of the New York Giants. And I look at what what comes up front for for Washington. Chase Young looks really good. Um, Jonathan Allen, Montez Sweat, Cody Barton has actually looked like a different football player in a Commanders uniform. Dude, that defense. I think their issues are in the secondary, and I think Montez Sweat is going to terrorize the Bears tonight. And I am really concerned about Justin Fields' ability to stay on, on, on the field and stay healthy tonight. I think this is a 10-point win for the Commanders. It hurts my heart to say it. It really does. But, man, I just I look at the way the Bears have protected the quarterback. I look at the way that um, Justin Fields performed in the first half and really the first two and a half quarters last week. I think he'll be fine in the first half of this game. I just, how long can that Bears offensive line hold up? And the other thing that really bothers me about the Chicago Bears, they're terrible in pass pro. Yeah. Picking up blitzes and disguises, and they're, they're absolutely horrendous at doing that. And Khalil Herbert, like, is a nice little back who should really go to blocking school. Hey, little guy. Right? Like, I, I just, I don't know what you do with this offense because a lot of it is Justin Fields, and he just won't let the ball go. Right. A lot of it. But a lot of it is the offensive line and the pass protection is terrible. Now, he's got to read that, and he's got to move the back around to give him a better chance to pick up the twist and the blitz, but... Justin Fields can't see the blitz coming out of the slot. It's mind-numbing to me. It's one of the easiest blitzes to pick up. It's his weakest. It's his Achilles heel in reading defenses. He's... I don't see any way the Bears win this game. It would be shocking if the Bears won this game. I, I think it's somewhere in the line of 31, probably 21. I think 28-17, I think the Commanders win and it goes under. Yeah, you know, I, I think that, uh, I don't know why. I don't have a good reason. I just feel like the Bears are going to be in this one. You know, I think you played well last week up until that, up until that just awful turnover by Justin Fields there in the fourth quarter. Uh, and you had a lot of momentum. You were feeling good about yourself. And if I'm the coaching staff, that's my messaging. Hey, we just got to go out and replicate what we did last week, whether it's in pass pro, you know, Justin Fields needs to feel free to run tonight. Like, 
That's how they got success, is he started running, which brought the backers closer, which opened up the middle of the field for him, which is how he got the completions, and I think he threw for three-something But, but last see, week. and he did. But to your point, when Justin Fields was running last week, what happened? It made everybody turn their head. So what? when you have DJ Moore as a wide receiver and Cole Komet as a tight end, those guys are going to run away. If you take your eye off of DJ Moore for half a second, he's going to have another step and a half on you. Yeah, He covers that much ground. But Justin Fields hasn't been that guy because teams have figured out if we blitz you hard, you don't have time to throw the football down the field. Yeah. And I, I think that's what you're going to see. And again, here are my prize picks for tonight. I got Justin Fields for more than 193 yards. Gaz new tight. Thank you. I've got DJ Moore for more than four receptions. Montez Sweat, I essentially need a sack. And Terry McLaurin needs to have six catches. Yeah, and I like Done. those. I think that's safe. That, I do. That should be a win. You should probably send me your prize picks so we can show you. What do you guys make up uh, the Commanders and the Bears tonight? Uh, Jeff Woodward says... Dicka would beat Ohio State with only 10 guys on defense. Mike Singletary would fill the gap. He'd take those five inches and shove them up. Never mind. Okay. You get my point. Okay. Kaner and the Bears will get the number one pick. I hope they never win another game this whole entire season and stuff. Yeah. Because that, to me, is is that's what this team needs. I just think that, the, dude, Justin Fields, they, they just need to keep going through this. I don't think Justin Fields is a long-term solution. But the reality of the situation is the guy has talent. It is clearly a coaching issue, man. Oh, why? Why would you say that? Because, because he needs development. There's no doubt. You don't do what you did at Ohio State and then roll into the oh league and you God. can't throw the football. I am not prone to violence. Yeah, you are. I actually am not. Uh, but Matt Eberflus is a clown. He's awful. He should not be the head coach. Yeah. Justin. That's true. Okay, like, I get it. Ebercock should not be the head coach of the Bears. Justin Fields, you can say they talk in your helmet. But, but did you not see improvement last week? There was improvement I last week. I saw improvement week. until he relapsed into the, the turnover machine that he's been. Football 50, 10 to the hour, every hour on the Monty Show. Presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks, the official daily fantasy partner of uh, the Monty Show. Uh, all you have to do is download the Prize Picks app. Play with us, you guys. That we, we In our uh, Instagram members only chat, we do a ton of prize picks, and it's so much fun. I actually won. I got kind of hosed last night by Zach Gallen. I got one of my my five pack was not the promo. They have promos every day, so Zach Gallen was on promo for three and a half strikeouts. I had him at five. He got four. Of course he did. Yeah. But I won last night, which was great. It snapped like a 56-day losing streak on prize picks for me. Yeah. Download the Prize Picks app. Use the promo code Monty to get 100 deposit matching. So you think that this is, you think this is coaching? That's a problem with Justin Fields. Yeah, I think there's a lot of it that's coaching. I, I, I think there's a lot of it that that obviously he's got to be better. You know, you love for his ceiling. You know, or I guess it's not his ceiling. His base as a college quarterback coming into the league to have been a little higher. But I'm a big believer. Like you don't do. Like, remember the last game he played in college? Yes. And he ran all over the place and was like, oh, this guy is a true dual threat now. He's shown his ability to run. So don't forget, this guy was regarded as a prolific passer in college. So don't tell me that this guy can't throw the football all over the field. I know he can. The issue is, is that he's not getting the development time in the film room that he needs. Because if he trusted what he saw... He would be a similar guy to what you had at Ohio State, but he doesn't trust here, it. Here's the problem. When you're a quarterback in the NFL, you can throw the ball all over the field. The, the least effective quarterbacks in the NFL can throw the ball all over the field. The best quarterbacks in the NFL can see the throw before they throw the ball all over the field. Justin Fields, and I, I don't mean to be redundant again, he has trouble picking up the blitz, and just tonight, 
All I want you to do when you watch this game, watch Justin Fields' head. Where does it go? Pre-snap, just pre-snap. Because you can see what the Bears are doing. The Bears are breaking the field into segments for him. They're telling him you have two reads. That's it, dude. DJ up up the right hash, Cole Komet down the middle, run. That's it. DJ's not open, Cole Komet's not open, run. That's all they're doing. Yeah. And offensive offensively, that's fine. Defensively, it's a problem because everybody knows that's what you're doing. So what are they doing? They are bringing the, the back down to the slot, the DB down to the slot, especially when the Bears are in three wide receiver bunches, it's been a huge problem. You have one of the corners, because they don't play man there, they they disguise it, right? One of those corners blitzes, and Justin Fields isn't picking that up. When they run bunch receivers left, so Justin Fields is a guy who is a right-handed quarterback, that's his blind side. He cannot read the blitzing slot back from his blind side. Mm-hmm. So if you look at his head pre-snap and you look at his gestures pre-snap and then watch what he does with the running back because that's that's what changed in the first two and a half quarters. What happened in the third and fourth quarter? Yeah. They started disguising their blitzes. They started coming through the A-gap, taking advantage of bad offensive line play, inability to maneuver on the offensive line, inability to adjust, Khalil Herbert's inability to pick up the B-gap. Yeah. They... Absolutely got exploited last week by a really crappy defense. They exploited the Bears' offensive line and running backs. Come on, man. Come on. This kid, I, I, I agree with everybody. Dan Orlovsky said it again this morning. If at the end of this season, send him to Atlanta and let, let him and those prolific running backs, Bijan Robinson and company, let them th- flourish together. He's never going to be a, a number one quarterback wearing a Chicago Bear uniform because that's not what we do. It's not what we do. The Chicago Bears win when you have dominant skill positions, completely sus quarterback play, and an absolutely unbeatable defense. Right. That's the only way the Bears have ever been good. That's it. 100%. That's it. Casey Anthony. Justin Fields is 5 for 27, tied for worst 32-game start in NFL. His ceiling is nowhere near Super Bowl, so what's the point just wasting time? Mm-hmm. You're just wasting time. That's it. I, and I know you disagree with that. Yeah, I think we all like to say the guy's a failure. And, and the numbers say he's not good, but, but I think good coaching can overcome that. Because, again, if he... Like, let's say that Justin Fields was prolific at reading the defense and he knew how to move his back and he knew when the defense was disguising. Like, let's say he was that guy. Then we wouldn't be saying, oh, Justin Fields sucks. What would we be saying? Well, he's really good pre-snap, but he's just got a really low completion percentage and that's what they got to fix. So I maintain that what we saw last week was definitely a step forward, but you're right. In the second half, he was inconsistent with protections. He was, like... He is inconsistent as a football player. But again, I still make the case. Who's who's not as a as a younger guy in the league? Now, at the same time, the Bears, because they are so bad, are uniquely positioned in the draft. They will mess it up. They will trade out when they shouldn't. Totally agree. But I just don't I'm not ready to say that Justin Fields is not a starter in the league. I'm ready to say that the the combination of Fields and that coaching staff is not a success. I'm ready to say that Justin Fields is not a starter for the Chicago Bears. Yeah. And as long as is is Eber Flunky is the head coach of the Bears, and yeah. we can like Luke Getze, the offensive coordinator. I'll, I'll, I the biggest problem I have is you passed on Mahomes to draft your guy Trubisky, and then built a system that went against everything he does well. And you're doing the exact same thing with brand new quarterback, brand new head coach, brand new offensive coordinator. Yeah, you're you built an offense designed to hamper Justin Fields. Why? Why, why? why are you asking Justin Fields to stand in the pocket and deliver the football? Why are you asking Justin Fields to read defenses from the pocket? Let him roll. Let him get out. Teach him how to run to, to create space. 
oh, that's right, you guys don't do that. You want a pro-style quarterback. Well, he's not Justin Herbert, and he's never going to be. Yeah, that is true. Like it, it, it is. It makes me crazy. Uh, all right, let's get your comments in here. Hour number two of the Monty Show, as always, is presented by our good friends at TridayTrading.com. TridayTrading.com. So excited. My beloved Mrs. Monty got assigned her trading coach today. Um, Mrs. Monty is in the program at Triday Trading. I am super stoked for her. She is passionate about the market. She is passionate about making money. I'm really excited to watch her go through this process. I'm excited to hear about her interactions with her coach. And that's one of the things that I think really stands out about Triday Trading is they assign you your own coach. They're your conduit. They're your teacher. They're, they're, they're your sounding board, your mentor into day trading. When you're, when you're confused or you don't understand something, hey, coach, I need help with X, Y, Z. Great, let's talk about it. They set up conference calls. They, like they're there. They're proactive for you because your success is a real indicator about the quality of Triday Trading's program. And when I talk about a program, you sign up for a 30-day trial membership that is as simple as making a $10 charitable donation with Triday Trading. You give them $10, they give it to charity, it's a tax write-off, right? Then they give you access to their entire program for 30 days. And then you're just going to make a decision. After 30 days, hey, it's not for me. I've never seen somebody do that, but hey, it's not for you, okay, walk away. No strings attached, no money lost, you're just walking away. Yep. But what overwhelmingly happens is you see how confident you become and you begin to understand. And the number one question I get is, hey, is, is day trading a scam? Is that real? That's the number one question I get. It's absolutely real. It's absolutely not a scam. You make money. There are graduates that day trade full time make $1,000 a day on average. There, there are graduates that day trade part time make three to $500 a day on average. All the testimonials are online. It's all right at your fingertips. Trydaytrading.com slash Monty. Make sure you tell them you heard about it. On the Monty Show, we should have Mrs. Monty on at some point to talk about the program for you guys. I'm stoked she's going through it. I wanted to go through it, and she's like, no, no, let me do it. And so I gave in. I, I, I let Mrs. Monty Honey. do it. Honey. I let Mrs. Monty do it, and I'm really excited for her. So we'll keep you guys up to date on that. I am... Uh, I'm as stoked about that as I could possibly be. Yeah. Uh, Mike Smith says, Boss Frog is TCU fan with SMU money. Maybe he can buy his way into the new commish spot. Maybe. Well, Boss Frog's a baller. There is, no, there is absolutely no doubt about that. Um, all right, let's see. Um, John Ham for $5. With Jake, Jake's logic, no team is legit this year. How do you figure that, yeah, dude? How do you what are you figure talking that, man? about? Uh, Penn State now would not be a good win, LOL. Nobody said Penn State wouldn't be a good win. Yeah, I didn't say Penn I, State wouldn't be a good I win. I have no idea what you're... If you want to explain that, please feel free. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, Lee Barden for $5. Brett Yormark not attending the Red River rivalry uh, is low slash no class. It is not. It is absolutely not. This I, I don't understand why people are making this out to be some huge slap in the face. They are essentially not Brett Yormark's teams. No. The, he has no contact, and I've talked to sources at the Big 12 about this. Brett Yormark has no contact or interaction with, with Texas or OU. They're not part of the, the planning committees or the in the planning cycle going forward. He does not have strong relationships and ties. Why would he why would he be there? Why would this be the end of a world that he's not there? I, I don't understand why this is this feels like simple logic. They're not invested in the future of the Big 12, so why am I invested in them? Yeah. That's where Brett Yormark's mind is, and I actually agree with him. Yes, 100%. I have no problem with him doing that. Uh Greg Sankey will make an appearance for his two new programs, as he should. Yep. As he should. And he and he he engaged with the Big 12 about making sure he – I think it's strong to say that Greg Sankey asked permission, but he let them know he was going to be coming. And then the best part about it is is that Greg Sankey is going to fly in to Dallas, and then he's going to fly to College Station for the Texas A&M-Alabama game. Yeah. 
the lives none of us are living. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. It's amazing. Kenneth Maynard for $5. Penn State is a dark horse under the radar playoff contender no one's talking about. Good place to be. Absolutely. I think Penn State... Penn State is real. That defense. Yeah, and they've shown that on 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 stat sheet too. I mean, you you're you're holding teams to one score or no score a game. I think you're pretty good. <laughs> yeah, and McNamara was the quarterback for Iowa when they played that game. Let's not forget that. Yeah. So I think I think Penn State. You know what, Ken? I think you're exactly right. I think Penn State's absolutely under the radar. John T. A long shot, but Washington State could get into the dance. I right, man, it's the same thing for Oregon State. Like everything it's available. Everything's ahead of you, but do you guys understand how tough it is going to be? I don't know who's coming out of the, the Pac-12. Like, you look at the schedules in the Pac-12, and let's go to let's go to Washington State because they're playing really good ball. They're 4-0. Yeah. Uh, at UCLA, Arizona, at Oregon, at Arizona State, Stanford, at Cal, Colorado, at Washington. So let me get this right. you got to go to UCLA, Oregon, and Washington. How do you how do you come out of that? How, how like I think it's important. Well, Oregon State uh, beat Utah, but at Cal, UCLA, at Arizona, at Colorado, Stanford, Washington, at Oregon. Let me get this right. You're ending with Washington and then at Oregon. That's correct. So you avoided USC, but mm, I think you'd rather play USC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding? You've got Colorado, Washington, and Oregon. Three year last four games, Colorado and Oregon are on the road. Good luck. Yep. Good luck. And I, I even look at Oregon. I even look at Oregon at Washington next weekend. Game of the year in the Pac twelve. Good luck. Want somebody's not coming out of that. Yeah. Obviously. And then Oregon turns around and plays Washington State right after that. Then turns around and goes to Utah right after that. Cal. USC, Arizona State, and then finishes with Oregon State. Like, who's coming out of the Pac-12? Mm, I think it's Oregon because I think they're the toughest team as far as, like, grit, physicality. Uh, they, they want to punish you. I think it's a huge question mark. Yeah. It's a huge question mark. Uh, Casey Anthony got away with it for $2. Jagoffs of the day, the McCaskey family. And they run deep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they do. Uh, Casey gives us five more dollars. Justin Fields is five for 27. I read that one already. Uh, John Teal, Rex Grossman, Kyle Orton, Jay Cutler, Mitch Trubisky, and Fields. It's easy to say a guy sucks. How about the Bears are trash at developing? Well, Jay I Cutler. I agree, dude. Now, to be fair, Jay Cutler was not their guy. Remember That's that true. trade from Denver? But he, everyone loved that trade because it was like the first time and they did he, something. And he was really good for the Bears. Yeah. He was really good for the Bears. But. Trubisky, disaster. Um, Kyle Orton eh. was never going to be something. Rex Grossman, eh. If Flexi Rexy had gone on to do more than he did, I'd be like, yeah, we dropped the bond. We didn't. Yeah. Uh, Casey Anthony, CJ Stroud is already better than Justin Fields. 100%. Yeah. Uh, doesn't he have a record for efficiency or something or interceptions or something in the first, like the fewest interceptions in first 40 games of your career, like yeah. zero? I mean, he's been way better than people than I thought. Uh, Stephen Smith for 20. Iowa State will be celebrating Jack Trice 100th anniversary this weekend. Okay. You guys should definitely check out the history of Jack Trice and the history of Jack Trice Stadium. I'm, I, I, I mean, I'll skip the Bears game tonight. and I, I wouldn't even – you're going to be so wrapped up in that. I wouldn't even put your Bears flag out this weekend, dude. I, like, I, I, you're not going to have time. Am I a terrible human because the Bears flag hasn't made the, the, the porch yet? Like, how, how have you not flown it yet? Why would I fly it? Because you're still a Bears fan. We haven't won a game. Who cares? So, who cares? You're not proud of your team? No, the hell no, I'm not proud of my team. <laughs> Notice the Notre Dame flag's been out every weekend. You know, it's just, yeah, it, it just, it's you fine. Know. It's fine. Uh, Jack Trice is a great story, obviously. Um, what, didn't he die from an injury related to football? And the story's murky, but I have heard that name. Thank you, everybody, for your donations to the show. Um, all, by the way, everybody always asks us, what do we do with the Super Chats? 
Um, unless it's earmarked for something like the advocates or golf fund, something like that. It's, it usually goes to gaff tape to block the sun, Dude. uh, lights. We've upgraded all of our lighting. Like that's what we do with your super chats. It goes right back into the show. You know, we, uh, change the wrap so it doesn't say Norman 50 times on it. Cause which we're is all coming. pissed off about that, which is coming. Yes. Um, Jeff Woodworth, Kyle, Mur- Kyler Murray being traded to the bears. Bite your tongue. Stop. Uh, Monty, are you a Fairweather fan? No, but I am not. I am not. I am in no way, shape, or form a Fairweather fan. But I will not be celebrating this Chicago Bears regime. I will not. I will not be buying merchandise. I will not be flying flags. I will not. No, I will not be celebrating this regime. And any Bears fan that is celebrating this team, you're you're crazy. It's what I say about the Cubs. It's embarrassing the Cubs miss the playoffs. Yeah. It's embarrassing that they don't have their own starting pitching. Yeah. It's embarrassing you don't have the best um, you know, depth in all of baseball. It's embarrassing that Cody Bellinger has not already been offered one of the most lucrative contracts in the history of the Chicago Cubs. It's embarrassing Anthony Rizzo as a New York Yankee and Kyle Schwarber as a Philadelphia Philly. It's embarrassing. It, it, it's inexplicable to me. Inexplicable. Oh, but we went and got Dansby Swanson. Congratulations, you missed the playoffs because, oh, that's right, you don't have starting pitching. Oh, but Kyle Hendricks is your fifth starter on any on any rotation. And yet you're celebrating him as this great... Please, stop, stop. Uh, Kenneth Maynard, my four-team uh, playoff picks, Penn State, Oregon, Georgia, and Florida State. If Florida State gets in, I will be... Florida State should, has a really good chance to get in. But I just don't view Florida State as... And I want to be careful with this because they are 4-0. But they've beaten LSU, which was a really good win. Probably not as good now as it was then, but that's a good win. Southern Miss, Boston College, and Clemson. If LSU loses this weekend, how much does that hurt Florida State? Yeah, I think there's there's some of that, yeah. They're at Missouri this weekend. And I think there's a real chance LSU loses to Missouri. I think there's a real chance. Yeah, you lose that game, that's not great for Florida State, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Aaron Wilson, Cam has been lightly discussed. His knee injury is worse than assumed. Yeah, well, and he did a, and I don't know who asked that question, um, Cam Rising did an interview today where he talked about that it wasn't an ACL tear that's kept him out. It was a full knee reconstruction. He blew out his entire knee, which means all three ligaments, the MCL, the ACL, the PCL, and he had significant cartilage damage, which is almost always present when you have three torn knee ligaments. Yeah. I, in fact, have never seen it not present with a complete knee reconstruction. It's almost impossible to avoid. Yeah. So just really, yeah, just really rough. Uh, real Wade Nation gaming. I remember when the bear, uh, when the bears were good. I don't. It, it, yeah, you know, uh, Marcus Stuckey. Has Cam Rising been discussed? He has. What would you like to say about him, Marcus Stuckey? Please feel free. I'm I yeah. am here for it. Uh, Rodriguez. As a Browns fan, when we were zero and four like fifty years straight, I'd be hoping for a tank job for the draft, dude. The problem is we did that last year. And you still messed it up. Which is why I say, I agree with you in your flag, non-flag flying tactics. Don't celebrate this regime, right? Because we're in agreement on that. The regime is the issue. The, 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 like everything from moving away from downtown Chicago to the way you draft or frankly don't draft, um, you know, the way you don't develop guys, you know, like the lack of identifying a path forward based on who you're going to draft. It, it, it's unbelievable to me that we're sitting here talking about not having an offensive line for a guy that can't diagnose the slot blitz. I, I, I don't know how that's possible. And the idea that Justin Fields is permitted to do press and say, hey, yeah, they talk too much in my ear. Well, why are we talking in your ear? 
while we're talking in New York because you don't identify the slot blitz, and we need to tell you that's coming. Yeah, uh, Bob Smith, it's embarrassing that Chicago is the homicide capital of the USA. No, Bob, it's embarrassing that you think Chicago is the murder capital of the country. Chicago's not even top 25. Uh, it's St. Louis. But, hey, nice try. Uh, Montana, Montana, Pac-12 winner should be number one in the playoff. SEC winner two, Big Ten three, Big 12, or ACC winner fourth if Texas loses a game. Okay. I, I mean, I, I guess. I mean, the Pac-12 is the best conference in the country. See what happens when I'm being encouraged to read non-member comments. Uh-huh. There's a lot of reasons we don't read non-member comments. Brandon Butler, uh, Chicago sports fans are not fair weather. We have the worst pro sports in all the leagues ever, ever. Well, I think the only saving grace is the Hawks look pretty decent this year. Yeah, Connor Bedard's exciting. Bryce Martin, Cam Rising is not playing this year. May or may not, I don't know. Yeah, and I think that it's – and I, w I was trying to remember where the, hey, Cam's going to be back, you know – for the start of the season somewhere in those first couple of weeks rumors started. I don't remember who started that or who was saying that. Maybe that was the media. Maybe that was someone else. I don't know. But that, I agree with everyone saying, hey, that was way overblown. There, he, there was no chance he was ever playing early in the season with that type I of injury, agree. dude. I agree. Jimmy Otson, if the Pac-12 does not make the playoffs this year, then good riddance to the 14 playoff, dude. Mm. But the, the issue for me... And I don't know what you guys think about this. The issue for me is we obsess over, well, they've got two losses, bro. What, is that, what does that have to do with anything? Well, Michigan's undefeated. What does that have to do with anything? Yeah. When did we throw out strength of schedule? And it really irks me that we're, we obsess over results on paper. And that's where the playoff committee, I think, has fallen short. That a two-loss Alabama team or... Yeah, don't, don't, no. I agree. I'm not, I'm not, too, I'm, I will not play your game, Jimmy. Uh, they go eight straight weeks, come off their bye. Okay. John Ham, 42 minutes ago, Jake said Penn State is not a good team this year. Actually, that's not what he said. It's not what he said. Not sure how beating a team who is not good can be considered a good, dude, like you're paying, you're paying money to stir the pot. And now I'm uh, assuming, you picked up a free membership, which is always just exceptionally disappointing. Um, but I just don't, like, if you want to stir the pot, stir the pot, dude. But, we, yeah. I, I, I Nobody said that Penn State was a bad team. No, I'm not I'm not saying that Penn State is, is uh, uh, not a good win. But what I was saying, which you seem to be confused about, what I was saying is that this year's Ohio State's team, to me, does not live up to the prior couple of years Ohio State teams. So we were talking about Notre Dame, and we were talking about Penn State, and we were talking about Michigan and the, the teams that Ohio State is, is has seen and is going to see and their viability in the college football playoff. I maintain that Ohio State has a a a essentially an auto bid into the college football playoff, assuming agree. that they don't lose two games. I would completely agree with so, that. So when we're talking about Penn State, yeah, at the shoe, I expect you to beat Penn State. Absolutely. I expect you to control that game. I expect that to be a good game. But I, I would expect Ohio State to beat Penn State. I agree. Penn State's got a good defense. Absolutely. I do agree their offense is sus. I think Penn State's offense is sus. You you go to the shoe, you're going to struggle offensively. Yeah. And for a team that I think already is is okay offensively, Penn State, they're going to have trouble scoring at the shoe. And that's going to be the difference. I think wherever that game is played is who would win it. Um, but I, I it, it, it's fine. It's fine. You, you You just keep paying to have your comment read. That's cool. Uh, J.K. Marshall, I just checked. Chicago is number 10 for the for the year of 2023. They're number 10. 2022, I want to say they were 27th or something stupid like that. And either way, they're not the murder, cap yeah. murder capital of the world. And who cares if they are? Yeah. Who cares if they are? Bryce Martin, you throw out strength of schedule when you're not producing with it. If you can't handle a tough strength of schedule, then what's the point? Totally yeah, agree. And I think that's that, that was the other point about Penn State and Ohio State. I mean, you look at the Big Ten. 
And yeah, sure, you're beating, you know, uh, what, Illinois 30 to 13 or Northwestern 41 to 13. But but that's why Ohio State has to beat Penn State at the shoe. It has to do it in a, a, not a dominant fashion, but definitely a controlling fashion. That's how you get in to the college football playoff reliably. Yep, totally agree. Let's talk about the Heisman Trophy Watch Week 6. A little surprising. Shador Sanders has fallen off of the Heisman radar. And I'm surprised by this. And I don't know what you guys think. I think Shador absolutely is a top five Heisman Trophy candidate. Um, I think there's a rubber stamp on Caleb Williams, and I am not that guy. Um, I think if you are going to win back-to-back Heisman trophies, you have to be elite and just head and shoulders better than everybody else. And I'm not even prepared to say that Caleb Williams has been head and shoulders better than Shador Sanders, certainly not Michael Penix Jr. I don't think he's been head and shoulders the best quarterback in the conference. I think Bo Nix has been absolutely the best quarterback in the conference, yet Caleb Williams is getting the rubber stamp as the Heisman Trophy contender out of the Pac-12 Jake, should Caleb Williams win the Heisman Trophy? Yeah, I mean, I think that the 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 thing with this is that Caleb Williams obviously having won it last year, all he has to do this year is is improve on those numbers last year and and get into uh, the college football playoff. If those two things happen, he's going to win the Heisman Trophy. And I I disagree that that maybe Bo Nix has played better, sure, but I don't I don't think if you ask someone, hey, would you rather have, have Caleb Williams or Bo Nix, someone would pick Bo Nix. Because I, I think Caleb Williams is more talented, uh uh, you know, and he shows us that regularly. And and I would be more in agreement about, you know, Penix or Bo Nix or anybody in his conference, even Shador, and I'm a Colorado guy, even Shador. But I'm not in agreement on that because Caleb Williams has improved on the bar that was set last year. And so when I look at Caleb Williams, I say, okay, what's the story on Caleb Williams? Well, it plays it plays at USC and Lincoln Riley's offense. So some of Caleb Williams' success is he plays for an offensive guru, and I love that. Okay, so the responsibility is on Caleb Williams to to produce because he's got that built-in excuse. So if you don't produce, that's going to be held against you big time. But he continues to put up big numbers, so there's that. I also think... USC not having a defense is a huge advantage for Caleb Williams. He's got the ball more. He's given more opportunities. So I, I think that's another recipe or another ingredient in the recipe as to why he would he would have a better shot because he has the opportunity to put up more numbers. Whereas I, I, I look at, you know, again, like Bo Nix maybe doesn't get as many possessions or as many opportunities as Caleb would. And I just think I look up and down this list like, you know, again, I agree. We talk we talk about this almost every day on the show and off the show. Quinn Ewers is somebody that I look at who who is building a pretty tough resume to beat at Texas. You've got quality win after quality win. If you go out and you go to the national championship game, like I I don't know how you how how you don't give it to him, but he's got to go and do that before I think you unseat Caleb Williams. Yeah, I think it's really interesting that we're talking about the Heisman Trophy, but aren't we talking about who the best quarterback in the Pac-12 is? Because (laughs) I think the only way that Quinn Ewers gets in uh, is, one, he's got to beat Oklahoma this weekend, and it is a huge advantage in that game because he's got the national stage, he's got the Longhorns on his hat, and I think he has probably got the best or one of the best defenses in the country backing him up. And I think everybody's going to be watching Quinn Ewers um, take on OU. And that's exactly what it is because you're the quarterback. And I think it also needs to be said that Quinn Ewers is one of the reasons they're the best team in the country, in my opinion, right now. And if he beats Oklahoma, I think it's going to be very difficult, if Quinn Ewers stays healthy, to not give it to Quinn Ewers at Texas. Now, having said that, I think Shador Sanders absolutely belongs on this list. I think it is an incredible slap in the face that Shador Sanders on most ballots is not top five. And I have no issue. I'm not saying that Caleb Williams is trash. I'm not saying that Michael Penix Jr. doesn't belong there. What I'm saying is there should not be a list if Shador Sanders isn't top five. Mm -hmm. And I think when you look at the the list, it's all quarterbacks. There there is no no question about that. I think Penix Penix and Caleb Williams are going to get the majority of the votes in the conference. Quinn Ewers should be there. I think Bo Nix should be there. 
Jordan Travis and Jaden Daniels have no business being on this list. And right now, the composite Heisman has Jordan Travis at five, Jaden Daniels six, Sam Hartman seven, Dylan Gabriel eight, and Shador Sanders sucking his thumb in a corner because nobody respects Colorado. That probably came out wrong. But my point <laughs> is, how, how on earth, how on earth, with no offensive line and no defense, and the performance that Shador Sanders has put up, how is Kyle McCord higher on the composite Heisman list than Shador Sanders? Well, I mean, it feels like we're doing exactly what we do with the college football playoff. We're saying, oh, undefeated, and you're the quarterback of the team? Yep, you're high on the list. I mean, it, it kind of feels that way. Like, like again, we've I talked— I don't disagree. Like, we've talked all about Jordan Travis, missing, missing Johnny Wilson and Keon Coleman all the time. And if you watch those games, how do you look at that performance and be like, yeah, wow, this guy's a Heisman Trophy caliber quarterback? I don't look at it that way. I, I just don't. When I'm talking about the Heisman, the Heisman Trophy winner not only should put up big numbers, but he should do it in a fashion where where he's dominating the game. And so that's why I say guys like Kyle McCord shouldn't be in this conversation, in my opinion. With all due respect, I, I but like. Look at JJ McCarthy at Michigan. Yeah, another great combo. JJ McCarthy is far, far higher up the list than Shador Sanders, mm -hmm. and I, I'm stunned by it. And again, I'm a Notre Dame fan. I think Sam Hartman's top ten. He's not top five. Stop. You lost to Ohio State. The only game of the year that mattered. And I'm talking about Heisman Trophy candidates today. But you know why Sam they, Hartman shouldn't be there. You know why they put him there, though? And this, I think, speaks to the other examples we've listed here. You know, Jordan Travis, Kyle McCord, whoever. Dude, they put him there because what's the national narrative on Notre Dame? Oh, well, Sam Hartman's the general of that offense. He's the guy. And they've had a pretty successful run up until the Ohio State game. So that's what I mean. That's what happens with the folks who are voting. So whether we're talking about the college football playoff or we're talking about who should actually be in this conversation, that is precisely why Jordan Travis is in the conversation. Because, oh, it's Florida State, and they beat LSU, even though LSU is mediocre this year. They beat LSU, they beat Clemson, even though Clemson sucks this year. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, that's yes. why they're in the conversation. And so I look at Shador and I say, dude, like just the same way that you know, Caleb Williams, my point on Caleb Williams was, hey, you don't have a great defense. You're going to get the ball more. You're going to get more offensive possessions because your defense isn't good. They're going to allow people to go down the field. You're going to get the ball back. Shador also benefits from that in the same sense. At the same time, no offensive line, uh, you know, running for his life constantly. So if we're talking about who's the most talented and most capable quarterback, Shador has to be in that conversation. Yeah. Yet we don't because they're not respected, and that's what's frustrating about it. Yeah. Uh, Casey Anthony says Jordan Travis has a noodle arm and he's not been great. He's not been great. Period. Daniel Dixon. Big question. If Texas loses badly, do they stay in the top 10? Mm. Man, it's hard to think Texas is going to lose badly. They're road tested. They're durable. Um, got a dude at quarterback. I, I mean, <laughs> like, yeah, that's, that's tough, man. I, I don't, uh, they play with a lot of swagger, too, man. Like, they are confident. Yeah. Um, beer cans and baddies. Heisman is stupid media darling QB award. Well, the Heisman Trophy is the best player in college football. Yeah. And overwhelmingly, that is a quarterback. And I think when you look at the way that – and, again, this is a Shador Sanders argument. They, they don't win a game with anybody else at quarterback. Yeah. They just don't. And you look at the Colorado State win. Um, you look at the the way they scored against Oregon. Uh, I, I mean, you you pick your pick your game. He's the reason that Colorado's where they are. Yeah. I mean, there they he is that dude, and it's continued without Hunter. Like it just is one of those things where I just don't think. Yeah, that it, it's a quarterback award. Bowers is the best player in America. Jake Bowers, doesn't he play for the Yankees? Well, their season's over. I'm assuming you're talking about <coughs> Brock Bowers. Um, Brock Bowers is not close to the best player in America. 
That does not mean that he's not amazing because he is. We're talking about best tight ends in the country? Okay. Okay, well, that's a talk, conversation. You want to talk about that. best receivers? You want to talk yeah. about toughest players? You want to yeah. talk about big moment players? Sure, we can put Brock in there. Yes. Brock Bowers is not going to be the reason that Georgia wins a game. No. He's on a list like 50 spots down on the Heisman. I think you know, I'm look. I'm trying to find him. He's in the, got votes. Uh, yeah, I mean, he has votes, but he is a long, like a long shot, long shot. They don't beat Auburn, in my opinion. They don't beat Auburn without Carson Beck making some really critical, dis- good decisions, mm-hmm. um, especially in the fourth quarter. Yeah. I mean, that that is – it is as simple as that. And I'm not trying to say that Brock Bowers is anything but amazing. But let's stop with the ridiculous over-the-top. Bowers is the best player in America. Yeah. Come on now. Let's say – and you're new here, I think. We're, we're pretty much realists on this show. Brock Bowers is not the best player in America. Uh, Tarrant County boy, who gets the Dick Butt Kiss Award? You're going to have to tell me what that award is because – I'm not sure who Dick Butt Kiss is. Um, I've never heard of him. Uh, George Klyovkov for Heisman, and he should every single day. Uh, George Klyovkov for Dick Butt Kiss Award. Back to the envelope calculations. Um, Beer cans and baddies. Did anyone last week put their team on their back and win games like Brock Bowers last week? Nope. Okay, do you want us to go down the list? or Please. Like, I, a guy, I, I, again, again, I get it. <laughs> he played well against Auburn. The one-handed catch in the fourth quarter was great. Did you Did but, you watch the Notre Dame game? Yeah, come on, dude. Did you see Sam come on, Hartman? Man. Come on. Did 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 you happen to see the, the Audric Estime run that won the game? Did you see uh, the, the I, I mean, the... 80, 90 unbelievable defensive plays Notre Dame made in the second half. I mean, the problem is is he's a tight end, not a quarterback. So I, you can make a case all day long w- w- without even having a second guess it that there are guys more deserving. J.D. Bertrand last week for Notre Dame, I could argue. I, like, I, I mean, you want to talk about performances last week? Again, I will just point to Shador Sanders, yeah. who threw for 371 yeah, yards please. and four touchdowns. Dude, I I can honestly, dude, if you want to have a fair fight on this, Keon Coleman is more oh deserving my God. than Brock Bowers, yes. dude. Uh, uh, yeah, like, there are plenty of dudes. Uh, come on. Dude, Marvin Harrison Jr.? I mean, come on. Like, I, I'm not disagreeing. Brock Bowers is a, a stud. damn good athlete and a prolific receiver in that Georgia offense. Where would Missouri be without Brady Cook? Yes, precisely. And, and see, and that's the other thing with the Heisman. You look at a team on Missouri's level and, and, and they're successful, he has a strong case to be, quote unquote, the most valuable player, the best player. Like, that's the problem with the Heisman. It is such an opinionated thing. And what about Ray Davis? You want to talk about putting a team on your back? Ray Davis at Kentucky? They don't win that game without... Didn't he run for 300 yards? Come on. Like, I like on, Brock man. Bowers, and, and and I'm sure he's Team SRT and everything. Yeah, dude. But come on. Come on. Like, what, what, are, we, what are we even talking about? Uh, Kenneth Maynard might sound ridiculous, but Ohio State better not look past Maryland Saturday. You, you, it's not ridiculous. It's not. You know, we'll see. Uh, beer cans and baddies. How did UGA win last week? You all sound like Beavis and Butthead right oh, now. Oh, please, dude. How you did they it. win last week, dude? If you're going to sit here and try and make a case for... for No, in all, wait, wait, wait. In all seriousness, you you can't be serious about Brock Bowers. You, you, I'm not going to take you as serious. I'm not. Uh, I'm, I just, yeah, I just don't, I, yeah, I just am not, there's no chance. 49er UCLA Wolverine, the big 10 schedule is stacked next year with SC, UCLA, Oregon, and Washington, unless you're Ohio state joining. I'm excited. You should be. Yeah. Did anybody see Michigan's schedule next year? Michigan's schedule next year. If you were curious, uh, what percentage would you put on, uh, Jim Harbaugh coming back to Michigan next it's year. It's a defense. Fresno State, Texas, 
Arkansas State, Illinois, Maryland, Michigan State, Minnesota, UCLA. I would remind you their only road trip through week nine, I think it is, is Champaign, Illinois. Mm-hmm. So these are all home games. They don't they don't go on the road for real until Ohio State in week nine. Let that sink in. Look at them finishing the season with USC. At Rutgers and at USC. Damn. <laughs> in Los Angeles to end the season. You already know Caleb's coming back. Uh, oh, my God. Jim Harbaugh is going to the NFL. Yeah. Uh, USC next year, LSU, Utah State, Notre Dame on November uh, 30th. Uh, that's in L.A. Uh, Maryland, Northwestern. Look at all these road games. Uh, Maryland, Northwestern, Penn State, Purdue, UCLA. Home games. Illinois, Iowa, Michigan, and Wisconsin. <laughs> the Big Ten is going to be a disaster next year. Hey, it's about time. A disaster next year. It's about time. That's going to be like, I mean, come on. Uh, Jim R says Big Ten going to be nuts. It is. Yeah. LV Seminole, I think we have a dog fan in the chat that thinks this is the Fine Bomb show. Well, seriously. Why we have Fine Bomb? Seriously. I mean, it, it's just so funny to me. But you look at you look at some of these schedules, you guys. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's a grinder. There, there is no doubt about that, dude. Where is? Uh, I haven't seen. Dude, where's what? We were just joking about. Dick Buckus? Yeah. He died. Shut up. Is that I'm not serious? even kidding. Adam Schefter tweeted it. And Pete oh, Thamel no. just retweeted it. That's brutal. He was 80. Oh, no. Dick Buck. Yeah, Dick Buckus passed away. Oh, wow. Aren't you guys a bunch of jerks? Peacefully in his sleep overnight. Oh, no. That is a legend. And I... Oh, wow. Damn, man. That sucks. Um... I've had some great interactions with Dick Buckus. Um, with his son, like, I, oh, it sucks. Dick was a good dude. Um, working in media and working in Chicago, just having, oh, uh, that's terrible. That's brutal. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, that's Doug Buffone, the late Chicago Bear linebacker, owned a steakhouse. And I produced a show called Jiggets and Buffone at The Score for a very short time. But one of the great things that I was invited to was Dick Buckus, Doug Buffone, um, Mike North, who was, a, who was a Chicago media personality. It's a bunch of dudes having dinner. And just I've, I've talked about how I've just been present for some great conversations. That was one of them. That was one of them. Um, I've had the great, I've had the great honor of just talking to Dick Buckus on the sideline at a bears game. Um, like it, he was just a, he's such a good dude to talk football with such a good dude to talk football with. Yeah. That is a real, real bummer. That is a real, real bummer. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, so Dick Buckus passes away at the age of 80. Boy, you wonder what impact that has on the bears tonight. Because he is absolutely a, a legend, uh, dude. No doubt about it. He is a behemoth in the history of the Chicago Bears. So I'm very curious um, what he is, uh, what he will. Ah, man, damn. You know, th that era of linebacker it took so much physical damage. And that era of football player. And, you know, having talked to Walter Payton about it, Gary Fensick, Jim McMahon's a guy that I've spoken to about this. Yep. Um, they just gave so much of their life. Willie Galt, uh, the Bears wide receiver, and I have talked about it. Richard Dent, the defensive end. And, and I mean, just they gave so much and got so little in return for it. Uh, Brandon Butler says, my heart is broken. Tarrant County boy says, dang, didn't know. Yeah, exactly. I will never make another Dick Buckus joke ever again today. It, thank you. Thank you. Alex says, I saw him play against the Rams when football was football. Seriously. Mm. Exactly right. Um, 
Don't feel bad when he was at the BYU game last week. He entered a cougar tail eating contest. It disappeared after the contest. I guess the cougar tail won. Okay. Uh, LV Seminole, rest in peace, Dick Buckus. Great example for all linebackers he was. Uh, Tarrant County boy, the Bears better whoop ass. Seriously. Ooh. 49er says uh, rip. Yeah, that's tough. Buckus was, was just an ass kicker, man. He was yeah. just a... And he was on my favorite show, Emergency. Was he really? Yes, he made a cameo appearance on that show. Okay. Uh, which you love. Um, yeah, Alex, today's players don't know the NFL's history. They don't. Uh, Joseph, what's up, Joseph Harper? Can Notre Dame at Louisville uh, a big trap game with USC next week? And Louisville's actually really good. Louisville's in first place in the ACC right now. Mm -hmm. So it, it's. I don't think it's a trap game at all because Louisville, their tape is phenomenal. They look really good on tape, really, really good on tape. So I think it's tough to uh, call that a trap game when they are, they're just very good. They are, it, mm, they are very good. Yeah, now here comes all the notifications on Dick Buckus. Ah, what a bummer. Yeah, man. What a bummer. Dude, like, who was your hero when you were a kid? Mm. I mean, you were a huge Lincecum guy. I was a huge, as a kid, kid. Uh, living in Chicago, I loved watching Kerry Wood as a kid was my guy. Loved watching Kerry Wood pitch. Uh, Mark Pryor as a Cub, loved him. Um, Sammy Sosa until the corked bat thing happened. Um, so it was all baseball for you. Yeah, it was pretty much all baseball. I mean, obviously Devin Hester. You know, I'll never forget Devin Hester performing against the Indianapolis Colts. Greatest you know? kick returner of all time. Yeah, you know, so that he he was definitely one. Um, and then, and then Kobe, you know, that was, that was the, he was truly my Michael Jordan. Yep. I totally agree. All right. Uh, bucked up the official energy provider of the Monty show. Uh, look at we, again, we've run right through it. 90 minutes later, Boom. Buckshot still having a great uh, impact on the show. And I'm telling you, it gives you an advantage. You guys, it is truly one of those game changing products. And I know we talk about that all the time, but I'm imploring you to go and get the six-pack of free buckshots in the description below on this show. Just click the link, fill out the form, they'll send it right to your front door, and it's a game-changer for you. I'm telling you, buckshot from Bucked Up Energy, uh, 200 milligrams of caffeine that's naturally derived, and it makes your mind work better. That's the best way that I can describe it. You look at, this is a screen you'll see when you click the link. Um, and you, you look at in the top right corner there, athletes, hard workers, and busy parents. That's exactly right. When your kids are running around the house, making you crazy, and you're trying to finish that report because you work from home, pop a buckshot. It's going to help you be more focused. It's going to help you have more energy. And the biggest difference for me is there's no big rise and then fall. There's no big spike. And then, you know, you just plummet with energy that doesn't happen with buckshot. Like it does the other energy shots. Because all of the ingredients are the highest quality. It's clean, long-lasting energy that just does exactly what it says it's going to do. And that's why I'm telling you, in the description below, and we've been trying to get um, 500 of these samples uh, put out to our viewers. And we're close, you guys. Um, in the last five days, we've had over 300 people uh, go and get free samples of Buckshot. Go get it if you don't have it. There's 221 uh, people watching the show right now, if just half of you go and get the buckshot samples, we'll hit our goal. Hook it up, buckedup.com, uh, the official energy provider of the Monty Show. And by the way, if you need things like pre-workout, if you're a whey protein isolate guy, their, their creatine, both their, their monohydrate and their six-point creatine is the best creatine I've ever used. Go get it right now. Use the promo code MONTY20 to get 20% off at checkout, buckedup.com the official energy provider of the Monty Show. Uh, Ron Nolan says, my guys were Bobby Hole and Phil Esposito, Bobby Orr, yeah. Uh, I mean, dude, if you want to get into hockey, I mean, hockey, I was, the the Hawks run was what I was lucky to be a part of. That was, that was basically, Man. you know, the championships I grew up on. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, it just is, and I think about guys like, Buckus. I think about Steve McMichael, uh, Mongo McMichael, who has ALS and is just a shell of his former human self. Like 
Brian Urlacher was one of my favorite bears. Brian Urlacher, absolutely. No doubt about it. James says Chuck Norris wears a Dick Buckus pajamas. <laughs> I agree. Boy, there are some dudes in hockey, man. Yeah. Some absolute studs. Mike Smith, I loved when I loved it when NFL films would be showing clips from Chicago Bears games and the eyes of Singletary. Dude, Absolutely. I can't wait for the NFL to churn out the life of Tom Brady. I am really looking forward to that one. Did you guys hear about this story? Maybe we lead off football at 50 with it. 10 to the hour, every hour on the Monty Show. Football at 50. The biggest stories in football presented by our daily fantasy partners, Prize Picks. Again, in the description below, there's a link to download the app. Use the promo code Monty to get 100% deposit matching at Prize Picks. Um, what's really interesting about this Tom Brady story. Tom Brady bought a minority share of the Las Vegas Raiders, 10%. Right. And everybody was like, hoorah, Tom Brady owns an NFL team. Well, it turns out he doesn't own an NFL team because it never went through. And why didn't it go through? We now know that Mark Davis, the owner of the Raiders, wanted Tom Brady to own 10% of the team, which as a franchise worth $6.2 billion dollars, should be 620 million. He was asking Tom Brady to invest 180 million dollars and the NFL said, "Nah, can't do that." The NFL will not allow Mark Davis, the owner of the Raiders, to let Tom Brady have a 10% share of his team for 180 million dollars. You like that? Are you what are your I, thoughts on that? I I do like it because I think that it everyone interpreted this as the league office. I got news for you. This isn't a league office issue. This is a owners in the NFL issue. Owners in the NFL will protect that which matters most to them, which is the value of their organization. That wallet that they're sitting on. So if you start handing out shares, right, 10% shares at, at a 90% discount, that's going to devalue because what's going to happen? And then we see this all the time in business, whether it's, you know, <clears throat> stuff outside of sports or whatever. We see it all the time. Once it happens the first time, it'll happen again. And so if the ownership group in the NFL allows this to go through, it'll start happening again and again. And people will try that's to control right. and do all these that's nefarious exactly things. That's exactly right. And so that's why... Tom Brady aside, and I love you, dude. You can't buy in for, you know, basically a quarter but, when it costs you a but dollar. But here's the problem I have with that. Oh, I think that's complete jackaroo. I don't know if that's not a word. But my point is, you're the owner of the Raiders. You want to give him 10% and he gives you $180 million? Great, knock yourself out. You just gave away 10% of your team uh, at a $500 million loss. But there's no doubt the behavior of an owner of an individual entity impacts the rest of the owners. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt about that. So I agree with that. Hey, he owns a team. He should be able to do whatever he wants. You want to give it away? Give it away. But I think you can't You can't tell me that that people didn't go to Mark Davis and say, hey, dude, sure, go ahead and do this, but here's what's going to happen. Yeah. You can't, I mean, that. Like, so that's what I'm saying. This isn't like, oh, like the NFL league office suspended dude for this. That's not what this is. This is business blocking dumb business. Yeah, I think... The NFL is smart. Um, the NFL is smart to absolutely protect their interest, and I, I have no problem with it. I just think you should be able to do whatever you want, man. What's? Let me ask you this, because that is a perfect question for this. What's more valuable to the league? Tom Brady's image and his reputation being invested in a franchise, specifically the franchise that got piped by Tom Brady, piped. right? Or Talk protecting cool. the, the P&L sheet of the of the ownership group and that's what i think is tough because i want tom brady to own a own a team i want him to have a stake in a team i think it's funny he picked the raiders but it's vegas there's a lot of reasons he grew why. up he grew up in the bay area so you get it right but like i i don't know i i get the premise but i think it made perfect sense why they didn't allow it to me anyway jeff woodworth says uh what movie was dick buckus in any given sunday or was it the longest yard wasn't he also in uh, Gremlins, I think. Uh, and he says, I grew up with Kobe and Troy P. Jim R. says Mongo was great. He was. Tarrant County boy, Mike Singletary, absolutely. John Hamm, 
Barry Larkin, Chris Sabo, Jose Canseco when I was a young kid. What are you, from Cincinnati? Uh, I've had so many good experiences with Chris Sabo and Jose Canseco. Jose Canseco, and people think he's crazy, and I don't disagree. But, dude, I love talking baseball with Jose Canseco. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Monty and I, way back in our, our days as fledgling cub reporters. Yeah. Went to Angel Stadium uh, when Jose played for the Blue Jays, I think it was at that point. Um, and, dude, just watching him take batting practice was wild, amazing. And then I was just standing by the dugout, and I nodded at him, and he fist bumped me. And it was one of the greatest moments in my life. Greatest moment in my life. Uh, hamburger was the movie. Okay. Uh, Adam P., most famous numbers, 51, 23, and 99. Well, 23 and 99. Yeah. There are a lot of 51s, too, though. No doubt about it. I followed you on prize picks. You did. I didn't know you could follow people on prize picks. Um, Mike Smith, the NFL was just pu punishing Mark Davis for having all the money, but uh, sporting that crazy-ass hairdo. What is that hairdo? I shouldn't talk, but what is that hairdo? Jim R. grew up in Pennsylvania. Franco Harris, Mean Joe Green, Jack Lambert, and Willie Stargell. Loved Willie Stargell. Loved him. Uh, J.K. Marshall, Mark Davis wigs for Halloween. I'm down. Yeah. Uh, Mike Smith, you watch Rocky Blyer on local news in Pittsburgh. Yeah, Rocky Br Blyer, there's a name. Tanner Plummer, John Beck, Max Hall, Darren Williams, the whole 06, 07 jazz team were my role models growing up. John Beck is one of the greatest dudes I've I've had the great pleasure of talking to. Absolutely. Uh, David C. Monty went red hot chili peppers. What does that mean? What do you mean? Yeah. Um, orange. Let's see. Yup. Face orange raised eyebrows. Is that what happened? Raiders versus the NFL, the never-ending saga. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, anybody see Mark Davis get in a fight with Charger fan who 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 was trying to get him to, uh, you know. That was scary, dude. Yeah. There was a, if you guys missed it, there was a, Mark Davis was in his owner's box, which is very near the fans. And a fan, like, was screaming and yelling at him, and he was screaming and yelling back. Yeah. Like, what are you doing, dude? Uh, OG Gary, what do you guys, what do you all think Herbert's going to do? I have him for fantasy. I think you're fine. Khalil? Khalil or Justin? Yeah. Running back, he said. Um, I don't know. Uh, that's a really interesting question. It depends how, uh, I don't love him against that defensive line and, and our yeah. offense, or I say our, the Chicago Bears offensive line is trash. Yeah. I might I might go a different direction, but that's just me. The Todd Father, what's up, Todd? Uh you can all you can't allow someone to ruin value of every franchise via 10% at 1.8 billion. Biggest gift to anyone ever in the IRS would have a problem with this one. Yeah, you're totally right. Yeah. That's totally right. Uh it's fair, y'all dressing up for Halloween. No, nah, man. No, nah, man. No, no, I can make a fat joke. I won't. Uh, LB Seminole, Mario Lemieux, George Brett, Nolan Ryan. Yeah, dude. One of the great moments of my career. Chicago Stadium. Uh, it might have been the United Center at that point. Could be wrong. Uh, Wayne Gretzky traded to the St. Louis Blues, coached by Mike Keenan. They came to Chicago, and it was absolute chaos with Wayne in the locker room. It was crazy. Yeah. And so good. And so good. Uh, when? So when are the Chargers going to uh, fire their coach? Not soon enough. A couple more. Drew Money says Oral Hershiser, Magic, Montana, and Rice. Oral Hershiser. Man, he terrified me as a Cubs fan. Uh, David C., give it away. Give it away. Give it away now. I, pro I did give it away. Uh, Richard Tracy, Ben Davidson, and Dan Fouts. Let's go. Let's go. Air Coriel. Let's go. Love that. Uh, Al S., Pat McAfee has proven that even a loud, obnoxious, overgrown frat boy in a wife beater can be popular in America today. Okay, I wouldn't say he's wearing a wife beater, dude. Yeah, I'm not. I don't know that that's the proper nomenclature. I don't think that's the case. We're an hour away from NFL football on a Thursday night. The Chicago Bears, the Washington Commanders, no longer owned by shithead. Um, <laughs> probably too much. That second one today, tip jar. 
Uh, the Chicago Bears, Washington Commanders, uh, the going Commanders are six-point favorites. 44.5 is the number. Still like them to win by 10. Still like it to go under. Yeah, I don't think they're going to win by 10. I think that this is going to be a one-touchdown game. I think that the Bears are going to play well, and I'm hoping, not guaranteeing, that Justin Fields doesn't make the big mistake this week. It's the I first hope that's time, correct. It's the first time they've really had the opportunity to build on momentum. You know, if I'm that coaching staff and I'm the guys in that room, I'm I'm sitting here saying, okay, we were playing really good football up until that mistake. And, yeah, it was on Justin Fields, but the circumstances of that also weren't great. I totally agreed with the broadcast. Why are you having him roll blindside? Don't understand that at all. I would not expect to see much of that tonight, uh, especially considering that Justin Fields cannot identify uh, the slot blitz from either side. So, to me, I, I think they will play good tonight, uh, and I think it's a one-touchdown game. And I, I think commanders win. Uh, Denny is DMing me. And he's like, nothing, nothing is ever free. They're going to charge me for those buck shots, dude. <laughs> do you guys see the crap that I deal with on a daily basis? The buck shots free. Go get it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's funny that people are, and I shouldn't derail the show with that, but I think it's funny that people are like, there's no way it's free. They're going to charge me. He's like, it's going to be like 40 bucks. It's like, dude, no, they're, it's they're not, free. dude. They're free buck shot. They want you to. They want you to try them because you're going to recognize how good the product is, and then you're going to buy some. I know it's rocket science, right? I mean, you've never seen wow. anyone give out free samples like Costco does. Wow. Right? Hey, try our product, and then we we're, we feel pretty good the percentage of people are oh going to buy God. more. Come on, you, dude. You do pay. I think it's, it, depending on where you are, it's about 3 bucks for shipping. Uh, you pay the shipping, but they give you legit six buck shots. You pay for shipping. That's it. So, you know. Uh, let's see who else is in Mike Smith, little Danny Napoleon leaving automatically made Washington a better team. Wish little Danny was still there. Helped to take the sting away from jackass Jerry. Okay. Wow. Is Jerry Jones a good owner? Mm. No, he's good at making money. Good but is he a good group? owner? I, yeah, I don't know that I'm ready to say that. I, I think that. It's hard to define what a good owner is because, you know, in some in some circles, a good owner is someone who prints money for the rest of the owners, right? Because if you're, sure. you know, if you're really producing on a high level, which Jerry is, obviously Jerry World, you know, has a ton of events. They got the Big 12 partnership now. Like, they do all kinds of stuff outside of the NFL. So when you're printing the way they're printing, you know, to me, yeah, he's a good owner in that sense. But in terms of building a roster and – you know, the way he handles guys like Dak, I've never really appreciated the sentiment that way. Yeah, I don't think he's a good owner. I think he's far too much involved. Yeah. I really do. Uh, Buckus is worth a TD. Uh, I agree. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Why are we back on the Pat McAfee thing? I, I, I'm i curious about this. Pat McAfee disrespected Wazoo fans. He needs to be quiet. I would love to have a Wazoo Oregon State in the Big 12. They are not... Really? Are we? <laughs> we made it two hours and five minutes. I mean, you know, that's definitely improvement. You know. Come on. Tanner Plummer, where does the power of Buckus factor into this game? I, I mean, I don't, they're not. I think if it was at home, yeah. that'd be different. Yeah. It's on the road. You know, like it, it just is. Aaron Wilson, LOL, can we get back to the Oregon State rant? No. Kim Coulter. Hi, Kim. Wrong question, because Jerry's made tons of money for his fellow owners. He saying, has. Dude. He That's absolutely has. Uh, Tarrant County, boy. Jerry World Sunlight. Ugh. Jerry World makes some money. Jones, uh, what's up, Santos? Good to see you. Uh, Jones is better than Snyder was, but that's not saying much. Well, at least Jerry was a playoff team. Dan Snyder didn't really have any anything going, oh and he was God. an awful human. Yeah, yeah, come on. Come on. Like, terrible. Uh, Tanner Plummer, well, the line for Washington-Chicago game just went down to five and a half. The power of Buckus? No. No. I doubt that. I mean, I mean, if you can get it at five and a half, you probably should. Uh, can I get a second free sample box from Bucked Up? Knock yourself out, dude. Yeah, dude. Do it. We, and I'm, we, we have, you guys have been amazing 
uh, on the bucked up stuff. Like the the samples, the 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 thing that's amazing is I think I don't people don't usually thank me for things. Usually people are like, hey, fan ass, you're stupid. You don't know what you're talking about. Right. I have gotten so many people to be like, hey, thanks for, for giving me that link to Bucked Up. Hey, thanks for the discount. Hey, thanks for the free samples. Yeah. People love Bucked Up. You it, Once you try it, you'll you'll totally understand it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. John and Gonzalez. Uh, you're listening to The Monty Show, the Pac-2 flagship for all things Washington State and Oregon State. Very casual. Okay, quick comment. Sports Center's now talking about the Butkus thing. Mm -hmm. The absolute savagery of some of these hits is incredible. Like, thinking about where the league's at now versus where it was is just wild. In the days in the 60s and 70s, which is when Butkus, I don't think a lot of people understand. I think his last year was 1974, something like that. They used the crown of their helmet as a weapon. Yeah. All day long. You watch Dick Buckus make a hit. He yeah. is he is putting the crown of his helmet into your chest and he is doing that deliberately. Oh. Like it is Dude. he was just a freaking freight train. The guy and the helmet technology and the face mat, the pain that those guys my God. Yeah. Like it is it is unbelievable. Wow, they just had a Rocky Blyer highlight. Uh the pain that those guys suffered is unbelievable. Yeah. And I don't even know how to. Mm. Uh, Tarrant County boy says linebackers with no teeth, terrifying, dude. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, Shonsky, what's up, Shonsky? Cowboy beat 49ers this weekend, twenty-seven, twenty-four. Mm. It's a huge moment in time for Dak Prescott. Yeah, I think it is his. You got Cajones taking the Cowboys, man. He's got to stand and deliver. It, this is so important. There is. There, there is always something on the line in the NFL. Yeah, Dak Prescott is playing for. I think he is playing for his career right now, and I think this game against San Francisco, where he has not played well against San Francisco, he has not typically been a great big game quarterback for Dallas. And we're going to talk a lot about that game tomorrow. It's yeah. a huge game in the NFL, dude. You better know it. You better know it. Um. KF, what's up, KF? Um, Cowboys are losing this game. I can't see them winning. It's yeah. in it, it's in Santa Clara. Like, come it's on, it's really tough. Come on. Um, whoa, comment um, Kim Coulter. That defense travels. Period. Well, not without Trayvon, man. They're not the same defense. They're a good. Listen, the Dallas Cowboys are a good team. The 49ers are a great team, and Brock Purdy has earned everything that. Everything that he is getting, every penny of that eight hundred thousand dollars salary he's got working, uh, and it's a. It, it, did you guys see that video today? He still drives his old car, and he has a roommate, Toyota Sequoia. I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, Brock Purdy is relevant. Dak Prescott is not. That's not that's, true. Yeah, that's, Dak Dak yeah. Prescott is one of the most talked about. I think controversial. Quarterbacks in the NFL. Yeah, just relevant. Just and, relevant. Everyone and, talks about him. And I think the hard part about Dak Prescott is he's really talented. Yeah. And he just finds a way. And and again, I'm not trying to be a jerk about the interception thing. I think this is also a real big moment for CeeDee Lamb. It's a huge moment for CeeDee Lamb. Right. You got to step up and make a play, man. Because you look at the Brandon Ayuk's, the I mean, all the weapons he has in San Francisco. They're a lead offensively, and George Kittle has become a a a rather vanilla part of their offense, which is insane to say. Because they spread the football, and Brandon Ayuk has been a breakout star this year. You don't have that in CD Lamb. Yeah, CD's got to be better. Brandon Cooks has got to be better. Like their whole, they have to step up to win this game. Have to. Uh, Mike Smith, 49ers beat the Cowboys last two years in the playoffs. 49ers and Eagles have the best uh, combo of zero offense and D in the NFC. I I still say the Eagles are underrated. Yeah. I think they're underrated. They are. And, yeah. Um, I read that one already. Uh, Marcus Emmer, BCB Purdy going to slice him up. <laughs> yeah, oh boy, never forget, do you, man? You never forget. 
Uh, Capazzo, what's up, Capazzo? There's my guy. I'll be down for golf. Looking forward to seeing you. Daki Poo soon to be kicking rocks while walking the unemployment line. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, if Dak Prescott is the quarterback of pick your mediocre team. Chicago Bears. He's probably dead. Um, <laughs> if he's the quarterback of the Packers, tell me they're not NFC championship material. The Pats. Tell me they're not AFC championship material. The Jets. They are Super Bowl contenders. I know that everybody likes to downplay Dak, and I'm telling you, do that at your own peril because I believe that he is good enough to take them to the Super Bowl. Yeah. He needs help. And the hard part is everybody wants to point at Dak. So they say, well, look at how good the offensive line's been. That's great. Look how bad their receiver core has been. Look how bad their receiver core has been. Yeah. How much, and this is a, a legit question, how much do they miss Zeke? Because I think in that locker room, they miss Zeke. I think Dak misses Zeke. I think there was value in Zeke just in a guy. And he can still play, I think. And he's a better uh, blitz pro guy than anybody else. They, and I like Pollard, but he's a better blitz pro guy than Pollard is. Yeah. He's a better short yardage guy. Like, I, I truly think their biggest issue is CeeDee Lamb's not a number one. Yeah. I think it's a huge problem for them. Huge problem for them. But that's just me. Uh, Elaine Tran, Lamb was always overrated. Well, and I think he's showing that. Uh, Joseph says Dallas' only chance against San Francisco is if they shut down CMC, who's been – I think he's an MVP candidate. 100%. I think he's been that good. Gary Wolf, any given Sunday, just saying. Just saying. Uh, I think twins are great because I don't have any. See what he did there. Right. Procreate on a on a Nick Cannon style level. What do you do if you like the cack. are surprised? <laughs> Almost. What do you do if you're surprised with twins? Oof. Ooh. Uh it's fair. Jalen Dan is Jalen Daniels. I haven't seen an update on Jalen Daniels. Day. Uh Dallas contains CMC. They win the game meeting the under and only scoring 17 points. Delaric, the only game uh that matters for one per this week ain't it. It's McCarthy. The only game, this game only matters for one per this week, and it is McCarthy. Okay. If Mike McCarthy beats San Francisco, that's a huge win for him, no doubt. Uh, Tarrant County boy. Dak has the best strut, though. Flex on him, Dak. <laughs> My guy. Uh, Mike Smith, if your name is not Staubach or Aikman, you can never live up to the hype, uh, of Dallas Cowboys quarterbacks. You might not be wrong about that. You might not. Best in Mapes. Philly's secondary has been sus with the losses and haven't played to their potential. They have, but I still think they can. I mean, Jason Kelsey's on their team. What more do they need? <coughs> I mean, he's a <coughs> Swifty now, right? Right. Uh, you dub fan Jim. Hey, Jim. Uh, Dak is good, but every uh, playoff game is a big game, and he has trouble in those. <laughs> well, you ain't wrong about that. Mm -hmm. uh, Zeke was trash in Dallas last week. Not wrong. Capazzo, I think Dak's problem is Jerry not wanting to spend enough to bring in players uh, the players need it. He spends in the wrong places. Yeah, agreed. And Micah Parsons being hurt is a problem. How healthy is he? Is it a knee or an ankle? They're being kind of coy about that. Being kind of coy about that. Uh, Kim Coulter, okay, now you nailed it, CD. Well, he needs to step up. Yeah. Uh, Chuck B, what's up, Chuck B? Remember Raiders took Ruggs versus Lamb in the draft? Oh, so close. Hey, look, before he bought that Corvette, I shouldn't joke. Oh, dear. Oh, my. Sir. He was out of the league pretty fast after nope, not <coughs> doing it. Boston Mapes, I did too late. Uh, Mike McCarthy is mid as a play caller. Dak hasn't been the same since the broken foot. Oh, I disagree. I think he's fine physically. You understand how gnar that ankle injury was? He didn't break his foot, dude. He dislocated his ankle and broke that thing in like 10 different ways. But you think back to game management. That's been the Cowboys' biggest problem. Yeah. Game management and I think a real lack of talent in the wide receiver room. Yeah. I think that is what it is. Delirik, Dallas trade for D. Adams before trade deadline. Uh, that would be, but they don't have a cap for it. And Devontae just came out and said that he wanted to be in Raiderville for a while. 
Yeah, I don't think he's looking to leave the Raiders. Yeah. I really don't. OG Gary, AM wins, Kentucky wins, Texas wins, go Tigers. <clears throat> How good is Kentucky? You know what I'm going to say? Just keep winning, man. Just keep winning. That's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. Yeah. Uh, OG Gary, Mapes, bench your good players. I need a dub in fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> Tanner Plummer, Monty, didn't you say before you hated Jason Kelsey that the beard is gross? The beard is gross. Yeah. Okay. But, like, but he is a lineman. Like, he is husky. <clears throat> I I wish the Eagles got the respect they deserve. And they don't. Even winning a Super Bowl, they don't. You know. KF, I think Dak throws an untimely INT and it costs what? him the game. You're a hater. What? Sir. <laughs> You're a hater. Dak May. Prescott throwing an interception? May Neil Brown. <laughs> May Neil Brown get a lifetime contract extension, sir. Yeah. God, I don't wish that on anybody. Even, no. Yeah, that's rough. That's like Jim Harbaugh coaching the Bears. Uh, the Niners defense is going to destroy Dallas this weekend. That front four, go Niners. You're not wrong, CJ. Elaine Tran, uh, any town fans like the movie The Town? I love The Town. That's a great movie, dude. It is. Uh, I don't have any bad players, Gary. Truth. When you're a pimp, you're going pimp. Yeah. Uh, any Twins fans? Oh. Oh, oh. Twins fans. Did you guys see that uh, America's quarterback went to the game? And <laughs> nobody really noticed him there. Did you guys see that? Yeah, so Baker was at the game. <coughs> <coughs> So Jake makes a thumbnail for the show today. <laughs> <laughs> and our lead story today, if you go back to the top of the show, was the battle, the fight for Texas. Right. And so he puts a, you know, he puts like Quinn Ewers on there. He puts, you know, Dana Holgerson on there. Mm -hmm. Right. Blake Shapin. Blake Shapin. Mm -hmm. And then slides it in like he's you know, some kind of secretive agent and puts Johnny Vegas on there. He puts Johnny Manzanelli zeal in Mr. MGM on there. I mean, he put Johnny Manziel on the thumbnail today. You know, Johnny Manziel is no Jalen Henderson. He's no Max Johnson. He's no, you know, uh, Marcel Reed. Johnny Ryder, but he'll do. Stop. Stop. You know why I put good old Johnny on there? Because the last time I checked, that was the last time a and did something. You're a hater. I, tell me I'm wrong. When's it, like, what has Jimbo done? What's he done? Well, ap oh, that's right. Nothing. Nothing. Which, admittedly, was very predictable. You knew that Jimbo was going to let you down. Jimbo. That's what Jimbo does. No. I don't disagree with you. You knew... But it just was, it was, it, how do, how do I say it? It was a, it was a really sly, uh, you know, it was just really sly of you to do that. <coughs> well, that's me. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on now. Yeah, dude. Come on now. Johnny I'm Manziel. Sorry, offended by that. Man, did you guys see him flying to Vegas with his iPad? Hey he can study playbook while he's going to Vegas. And Oh, yeah. Uh, his tablet said zero time. You know, Elaine Tran said, I pressed the like button. I appreciate that. Yeah, I wonder who throws tablets better, Johnny Manziel or uh, Dayball? Wow. Man, you're just here <laughs> for it today. Did you hear about the Giants? This story with Evan Neal mm. is wild, bro. Dude. So Evan Neal went on some stupid little podcast and was like, hey, man, these guys booing the Giants, they're all burger flippers and hot. He said hot dog flippers. Like, I'm listening to Greeny today, and Greeny's like, who flips hot dogs? <laughs> Don't you roll hot dogs? I'm like, what the flip is a hot dog <laughs> flipper flipping anyways? You don't, you, you steam or boil hot dogs, right? Yeah. This dude can't even, number one, he can't block anybody other than him, his own teammate. Yeah. And he, let's be honest, Evan Neal has been terrible. So terrible. So why are you rolling out lions don't concern themselves with sheeps when talking about your fan base? 
he was asked about this. And he was asked about fans booing because he had made hand gestures. He claims it was not the middle finger that he gave to Giants fans. Oh. Couldn't possibly have been a middle (coughs) finger. Yeah, it was. Uh, He was asked about booing. And he went with the, what do you know? You've never played the game. Yeah. He went with the tried and true I don't come to your office and boo you when you turn out a, uh, you know, a shitty TPS report. Okay, fuck you. How's that? I love guys who are like, what are you? You probably just flip burgers. And I agree with everybody else who has said, well, yeah, they flip burgers so they can afford giant tickets, you cock. Like, how are you? How are you ripping giant fans? Yeah. Because they flip burgers and hot dogs. Which, again, who flips hot dogs? You don't flip hot dogs or brats. Um, I am I'm confused by this. And then there is the New York media. ESPN New York went absolutely ham on this. Evan Neal looked up towards the stands, raised his arms, and gestured sarcastically. He said he did not flip off fans, but he did yell a clear message to them. They are booing us, so I said, boo louder, Neil told NJ Advance Media on Wednesday. Why would a lion concern himself with the opinion of a sheep, he added. The person that's commenting on my performance, what does he do? Flip hot dogs and hamburgers somewhere? Are you kidding me? I'd Get cut ready, his ass. I would. How mind. dare you? These people pay your salary. You? They pay an obnoxious amount of money to park, an obnoxious amount of money for PSLs to sit there and watch this pap, and you call them hamburger flippers? What, you're so much better? I'd rather have a guy that's flipping hamburgers block than your piece of garbage ass. Who the I'm hell are you garbage. to talk to fans like that? You piece of garbage. <laughs> I hate when players do that. You're not above us. What, because you happen to play a sport? You're better than me? You're better than the people that pay your salary? These giant fans were here before you, and they'll be here after your sorry ass is cut. <laughs> after your sorry ass is cut. <laughs> and then what did Saquon say today? They, they, of course, because, you know, New York media, they asked Saquon, hey, uh, what do you think of your teammates' comments about fans? Saquon rolled out the same thing. Well... You know, the advice I gave them and I give all of my teammates are you shouldn't talk about fans because it's a no-win situation. And, you know, they were here before us and they'll be here after us. Like, dude. The problem is there's NFL people reporting that the locker room is supporting Evan Neal and that they agree that it's that fans are unimportant, which is why your team is terrible. Yeah. I just love that he said they flip hot dogs. Can we talk just really quick? Two seconds. Is that funny to listen to someone do that? Do you like? Do you guys enjoy that once in a while? I hate yelling sports radio. Yeah, I'm not a. You guys, you guys have seen me get fired up if you watch this show. You know, um, I am not somebody that yells like that. Yeah, I, I just think it's bad. It's unlistenable, in my opinion. Yeah. And it's New York, and New Yorkers ingest their sports media very differently. I totally get it. I am not a yeller like that. No. I, I'm not. Uh, Dakota, Tup, Dakota, I just said something nice about Missouri. Where were you? Uh, Taylor is flipping Travis dogs, if you know what I'm saying. Exactly. Wow, bro. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. Uh, Aaron Wilson, he went in. Yes, he did. Uh, bear down cats. Grilled all beef dogs with relish, onion, ketchup, mustard, and chili. Bear down on one of those. Okay, I can't do the chili portion, dude. I'm I'm all dude. good with I'm good with relish and onions and ketchup and mustard. Really, not the mustard because I don't like ketchup and mustard on the I same dog. I love chili on a hot dog. Do you really? I haven't had it in a decade, but you hand me a chili dog. Yeah, I knock it down. Fat boy ain't turning that away. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Uh, I I'm a huge fan of hot dogs. Yeah. Uh, I think Costco makes the best hot dog. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. Wow, he told us how he felt at the time. Yeah, he did. Uh, Tanner, Monty, you need to go on a New York level rant one of these days. Never going to happen. No. Uh, Clutch, sounds like we found our jack off of the month. Okay, dude. And it's only the fifth. Bro, dude, if you're going to roll in here and try and play on show themes 
At least get the nomenclature right. It's not jack off. Stay hard. It's jag off, sir. Which is also, I would remind you, a Chicago term. Yeah, not a New York term. Yeah. I love you, bro. Appreciate you being a member. But Dolmer just get it right. Wop. Hey, so- Dolmer. Sorry, man. Just joined. Wow. Sucked into TikTok. Uh, okay. 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 Uh, Bastin, hey, Mr. Lion, how did it feel when the those Seahawks ripped your heart out last Monday? Vapes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rod Nolan, Monty, you do not understand the infinity do- of dogs. The infinity. What does that mean? Yeah, what does that mean, dude? Help me learn yeah. it. Uh, he was better than ticked off Vic. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, but at least ticked off Vic was in his car and he wasn't like a professional. Yeah. Suckmyass.com. Uh, Aaron Wilson says, it's nice everyone once in a while. It's funny. Once in a very long while. Uh, as long as there's ketchup and mustard on the glizzy. Stop. I God. knew somebody was going to say it. Dang it. I knew somebody was going to so ruin. I said, yeah. I knew somebody was going to ruin hot dog talk. Stay home. Oh, with, yeah. It's oh, a glizzy. glizzy. Glizzy, man. Glizzy. Hey, can I get a couple of glizzy dogs with jelly? Thanks. Hiscock. Come on. Uh, Destination Destination Dog and Joyzy have the best dog. Super dog in Chicago, and I'll fight you for it. Uh, Tanner, not going to lie, I enjoy when people get pissed on sports radio. Listening to him do that was kind of funny, though. I'm not, I can't even d- deny it. A matador can block better than Evan Neal right now. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. All right. The Monty Show presented by our good friends at The Advocates, theadvocates.com. Again, please hit them up on uh, Venmo. They are giving uh, costumes to homeless kids for Halloween. Five bucks, three dollars, two dollars, a million. Whatever you can do, please. The advocates are at Advocates Donations on Venmo. Make sure you tell me you heard about it on the Monty Show. Until tomorrow, go Bears! The Bears! The Bears! Yeah. Say goodbye, Jake. Goodbye, Jake.